This week on the program, it's a film about an indefensible, disgusting pervert. No, not Jeffrey Jones. It's Beetlejuice. I'm Andrew Dietz. Steven Sadak. Eric Juice. Uh, Bug Breakfast. And we're here to see some ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> everyone welcome to we love movies thank you for tuning in as always that's right we love movies month is getting a little spooky and a little funny as we talk tim burton's beetlejuice from 1988 grand year for motion pictures by the way juicy oh, year yeah. big year mm-hmm. i think this is the same year i think he, this is it's funny the guys who wrote this and we are going to talk a lot i think about the original ideas in this script uh that got buffed out thank god but the, mm-hmm. uh Burton did a episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents written by these same guys. Has anybody right? has anybody else seen it? No. no, no, no. Is that got, what you were doing today? I, I was part of what I was doing today. <laughs> yes, it was a seven, eight hour episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Oh, oh like yeah. you're putting in an eight hour day. Okay. Continue with your story. What's the episode? <laughs> about? Um, and it's Paul Bartel, Griffin Ooh. Dunn. They're making fun of high art. It's really, it's actually like pretty that. fun. It's pretty fun. Uh, oh. it, a lot of it does feel like proto stuff for this movie. The Paul Bartel character has a big Otho feel to him. Ooh. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. So if, wait, so Paul Bartel, Griffin Dunn, this is like a new brought back Alfred Hitchcock presents? Yeah, 88. I don't know if it had been relaunched or had just like been running silently and nobody uh, noticed. I'm, I'm no, I don't think so. He, he'd been dead for the better part of a decade by that point. Oh, it's no, I mean, a, he wasn't introing or anything. It's got a credit from 86. Okay. So it's like so years, it, that yeah, sounds to me getting, like they, yeah. they brought it back. A similar yeah. like Twilight Zone, now Forrest yeah. Whitaker's hosting it or whatever. Well, that even makes more sense than that that was like the prototype for what they were yeah. going to work on with this stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, Otho is a character that, I mean, we're going to get into, but like, I think every character sticks out in this movie. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Now, Steve Sadak, um, mm. if you found a person on Earth that was unaware of the film Beetlejuice from 1988, directed by Tim Burton, how exactly would you go about describing it to them? Well, it's kind of great because that's what's so interesting about it is it's such a unique movie. It's a, I wouldn't even call it a black comedy. It's like, a, it's like, a, because it doesn't get, it never gets that dark. Um, right. I guess I would, yeah. I would call but it they're a dead people. They are dead people. Are. Uh, it's a, you know, a macabre kind of goth comedy, I guess you'd call this. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, I like that. Uh, where macabity, dude. Macabity. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that. We should pioneer this. We should try. Like, okay. Yeah, the Skeleton about, League TV show could be a macabity. About two, two, <laughs> which actually, in which is great because it inverses the idea of what is a haunted house. Uh, in this in this world, it's you're the ghosts and human beings are haunting your house, and that sucks. And how right. do you solve it? You don't want to get someone named Beetlejuice to help you because he's a bag of trouble. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, he's a, an unreliable contractor. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he's also, I mean, I, I would argue, he, I think the, the uh, snake uh, version of him is pretty creepy. I think yeah. that that definitely freaked me out when I saw this the first <laughs> I time. I love it. Right out of the gate talking about the snake version. Yes. That freaked me <laughs> out too. I saw this. This was the first movie I ever saw in the theater. I was like five oh, years wow. old. Yeah. Five years old. Obviously didn't really remember it. I just know the story that my parents were like, we we brought you there back then. You just you, instead of you know daycare, yeah. you just bring your kid or whatever. Because you would have still pay a ticket for that kid, right? So yeah. it's just like your parents are going out dragging a child along for free. Sure, yeah, of course. And I remember the snake thing being uh, uh, quite scary. Well, that's happened twice now in movies that I think are pretty fun. I mean, I love this movie. But a movie that's also pretty fun is Dream Warriors, Nightmare 3. And he's a fucking snake in that, too. Yeah. Got Freddy snake in that movie. I mean, I would argue that that's a lot about what this movie... I mean, I I, I think this is as crucial a uh, uh, personal film for him as, like, Seven was for Fincher as far as, like, this is what I'm about. This is yeah. my tone. But also the text, like, the, the story itself, uh, like, them being like, 
We want, we want to get these people out. We want to reclaim our space, but we do not want to become these monsters. Like mm-hmm. I, I can see it as a, stig- a statement from him being like, I don't want, I love horror. I love doing that stuff. I think it's incredible. It really influenced me, but that's not what I'm exactly interested in. I'm interested yeah, right. in, a bigger fan, like a, a more emotions, bigger emotions, right? Like the, this family dressing. tent, like all this stuff. It's an argument, I think, between these two sides. It's also, I mean, it's hilarious to me that all so much of this movie is about real estate. Yeah, that's oh, incredible. Yeah. That's life, baby. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, yep. Chris, when you said it was a personal film, and then you mentioned David Fincher's Seven, I was like. Did seven happen to David Fincher? Yeah, I, 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 I kind of we, we thought, to thought that's where he was going. I was like, did his mother's head get cut off and put in a box? Where's that yeah, going? Is he the also same? saying Beetlejuice is <laughs> real and it happened to Tim Burton? Yes. The ex-wife that him and Gary Oldman share uh, was found headless uh, at one point. Uh, who knows who did it? This is the invention of a Tim Burton movie. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a Tim Burton movie, but like, this is like... It's got all the trappings. It's got the macabre bit. We don't have Christmas. Yeah. There's no Christmas just yet. Yeah. But it's 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 right around the corner. You know what it's, I mean? Like, gotta, it, as as you would say, Steve, it's a capital T, capital B Tim Burton movie. Exactly. You could have and easily like, made this a Christmas movie because those little like uh, the model, like you could have easily made that Christmas thing. Oh, just dust it. Yeah, you get yeah. some <laughs> coconut flakes on that fucker. <laughs> Oh, you just got to dust that model. You'll make it Christmassy in no time. A place no three doors down from me used to have like a um, a display for Christmas that was a giant model, not of the town itself, just, mm-hmm. you know, town stuff and train stuff. Oh, sure. I was always peering in, looking for, is there a Dante's Inferno whorehouse in here <laughs> anywhere? Dude, you know how like there, there's, there, I forget what the, um, it's not precious moments. <clears throat> Those were the weird like angelic cherub creatures, but there's some sort of, uh, like ceramics brand of like holiday building shit that people collect, and it's like you're making the winter village, and you can buy a library and the schoolhouse and whatever. Did, were your families not into these, like buying these like collectible no. like yeah, light up houses? No. Stuff? We did yeah, no, they didn't buy anything. Were, were they lighting? So they lit up like that. You plug them in and everything. Yeah, like yeah. That? They would light up, and there's like a little bulb inside, and it huh. would look like you know. There's there's some that are like Dickens themed, but it's really like just these like ceramic made buildings that people collect. I can't think of the brand name, but it would be awesome if that company wanted to get with the times. And oh, it's yeah. like you've got like yeah, Ebenezer Scrooge's you know office building, you know the Marley building, and like over here's where Bob Cratchit lived. Oh, and there's the whorehouse from right. Beetlejuice. Buy right. that oh, this man. holiday yes, season. Yes, and absolutely. here's a, a crack den as well. <laughs> <laughs> if they had sold that as a playset, it would have flown off the shelves. I think at the, oh, the yeah. Dante's whorehouse. I think that would have really, really sold. Because then what you do right is like you know I have a I have an aunt who's very very into this thing. Like she gets this thing out every Christmas. It gets bigger every year with like the additions or whatever. You start punking people like that. You sneak the whorehouse into the display oh, on I Christmas see. Eve <laughs> once they're asleep. And then when they mm-hmm. wake up on Christmas morning, oh, Santa brought me a light up whorehouse. Look mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. Dude. And then you could just direct the, the three wise men that away after Christmas morning. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's easy. right. Take your yeah. cheap gifts, give them to baby Jesus, and now go yeah. get do, laid at the do whorehouse. Do you girls accept frankincense or myrrh? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird this is Alec Baldwin? Isn't it strange that yeah. this is Alec? Yep. It's just because he's thin. He's well, he's thin. He's like he's nice. taller than usual. He's nice. That's the thing. That's the <laughs> weird like one. Nice, a That's the weird person. One. Yep. Yes. Like, very, exactly. Like he's just like he loves his wife. He doesn't want to cheat on her. He's not like he's not. And he's got the voice, but it's like it's a nicer Alec Baldwin. Oh, a be- you know what I mean? Like I, I think right. that, and he's kind of a nerd, which is kind of great. Like you know what he's I mean? A like super nerd. Like the the introduction he's of got his glasses. character, yeah. Adam. He's got I mean, mm-hmm. he's got glasses. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean. Steve's got glasses. He's about as nefarious as they come. That oh, doesn't yeah, count, don't, Eric. Don't yeah. That's true. No, but like, people just are not. <laughs> That's very true, actually. We're introduced to him not killing a spider that's in his yes. little display. Like, he and lets what it a go spider. out the window. My God. It's a big ass spider. I'd be like, I, is, no. is arachnophobia happening? <laughs> I'd be hitting it with a hammer, and that model is goodbye. Yeah, yep. I'll I'll yep. rebuild the movie theater or whatever I need to do. This <laughs> thing, I am nuking this part of the town. It took forever to get that little uh, wise potato chips uh, 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 car out of there. Did everybody else? Uh, 
Oh, they, dude, this oh, must I, have been some weird product placement. Like, there's. I didn't uh, just, notice this. this. There's a little in the opening thing when it's going over town. There's a truck near the market, and it's a big wise potato chips truck yep. on the thing. And I like it, and that couldn't just be like because you would just make it like a uh, uh, Vincent Price potato chips or something. People will just forget. Wise thing. was everywhere. This was a wise yeah. country for a while. A little bit. Oh, absolutely, dude. Wise was dominant. Ruffles, you can get right out of here. Now, Chris, the thing about that I, I, I'm wondering about, because like when that shot starts, it's like the first shot of the movie is like you're seeing the town on this overhead and the, the Elfman score just boom, 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 yeah. boom, boom, so boom, just good. amazing. But it goes from real to fake at some point. Yeah. And it I does. think the wise potato chip might fake. be one of the last real structures. No, no, no. That sucker is fake. Is it fake? That, I love the F4 way it's laid out fake. because it's like... <laughs> It's parked like in it's almost yes. in the street. The door is open. It looks like yeah. someone just hit this truck, like robbed it and stole all the potato chips. Well, I mean, this is I, actually, you know, and I'm going to admit something that might shock a few people. I've actually never seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure. If you could believe really? it. Just, oh, okay. never, just wow. really good movie. A weird blind spot. Um, it's good. But yeah. this is like to me, a Tim Burton movie needs to have. I mean, in, in a good one because he hasn't made one quite some time but um, is the. Uh, the kick-ass opening, you know what I mean? Like that, like, and uh, the opening sequence of whatever. And I think that, that like the, that, I think that that's what I love about the model opening is because like mm. these levels of reality kind of a thing, which we're kind right. of setting up with the thing, you know what I mean? Like we're playing around with that. And then obviously it's just huge spider where it's like, again, setting up this sort of like fifties esque horror, you know what I mean? Like huge spider joke. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's a good call. Like atomic horror kind of yes. stuff. Yes. Yes. I'm back to that. That's a great point. And also I, I like that. Uh, we'll talk about the, how they changed up the ending song, but the idea, the, the, like the motif of having these uh, like Caribbean songs there, are they all, um, what's Harry Harry Belafonte? Belafonte? Yeah. are they all Harry Belafonte? I mm -hmm. think. I, yeah, because it's Deo and Jump in Line, yeah, and, yes. and the Ven, uh, Juanita Sweetheart from Venezuela is all. I think yeah, I, I like that because that also tells you the tone is not trying to get scary, like it's yes. funky almost. It's like playful more right. than right. that. Exactly. Yeah, the, the big spider is like, oh no, scary. No, it's not. It's cute. Then yeah, he's yeah. and of course this nice Alec Baldwin who would never this Alec Baldwin would never call his daughter a pig picks what? up. A you spider. don't know that he never. This guy never had to have a kid. He didn't oh, have man. to go through that indignity. Lydia, I can't believe you got an F, a C on that math test. You dirty pig. <laughs> you dirty pig. We studied no, all we're week. Gonna, we're not going to do the little, the little ghost dance because you're a dirty math failing piggy. <laughs> oh, oh no. You didn't want to cut open a frog. A fucking C in my house. A fucking C. <laughs> uh, I looked it up just to confirm. It's four songs sung by Harry Belafonte. Deo. Man smart, woman smarter. He's mm -hmm. listening to the attic at some point. Sweetheart from Venezuela and uh, jump in line. Parentheses, shake, senora. Mm -hmm. uh, so those those are the four there. Um, all bangers, nothing but all total bangers. bangers. It's 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 a great spice to this movie. It's a weird thing, right? Because like this movie is so weird and it's so singular, and there's so much going on. I feel like in the hands of anyone else, this is a real like too many odd spices in the gumbo. Oh yeah, yeah. but like yeah, for vision. some reason, it all looks like a, a the ghost of a football team dancing to calypso music <laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> all somehow works totally together. It's like someone makes you a crazy smoothie drink or something. And you're like, all those ingredients sound terrible, but then you drink it mixed together and it's delicious. That's well, Beetlejuice to a team. It's a singular movie. And I mean, I guess it's closest to, I would say, like to a Wes Anderson movie where like everything feels like exactly only this movie and can only exist in this kind of a movie. Mm -hmm. right. You could swap elements in and out, but it's like, no, it's a Wes Anderson. Oh, no, it's a Tim Burton movie. So it kind of makes sense. And I mean, this is when he's, again, he's starting here, but it is sort of like, this is what Tim Burton movies are. Deal right. with it kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the biggest villains in this film, the oh, person dude. who needs to go off a bridge more than anybody, is oh, Jane, yes. the realtor. <laughs> yeah, man. I knew oh, you would have God. it out for Jane, and I'm of glad. Of course, how could you not? <laughs> yeah, just taking <laughs> photos of your house and sending it to people. To, they to just buy? be like, do we, like, like, you know, she sends them to the Dietzes, and it's like, oh, Charles Dietz from New York, he, he wants to buy it sight unseen. And I'm like, 
Stop trying to sell their house, you fucking ghoul. You're the ghoul of the movie, Jane. I I, I would be putting a restraining order against her. Yeah, like, get I, off I, my this property. Point, I don't care if she is family. Fuck it. Yes, like, exactly. like, honestly, get the fuck off my... Stop telling people that my house is for sale. She starts and, that chain reaction, right? Because if she didn't come at that point... Would he have gone to the store at that moment? Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. You're right. And that dog, that evil dog, wouldn't have got to them either. Exactly. Uh, at that, that point, that evil dog would be down the road. Hound. Jesus, this is this is the true Frank and Weenie. This monster <laughs> dog. <laughs> the the. But I mean, like she is coming. The last thing any childless couple needs is to be confronted with their childlessness at six forty five a.m. You know yes. what I mean? Like that is yeah. just sort of like yep. It's a decision couples make, and like I'm very proud and happy of my decision. I don't need it at seven o'clock in the morning from a stranger. You know what I mean? Like the fuck out of my house not only that but just also being like your home is too big for you i'm yeah. sorry yeah. but it belongs f for a family <laughs> that is a conversation we have all over dinner and like <laughs> yes. you say that you i say fuck you and then <laughs> yeah. we continue on with the meal and like yep. that that's the beginning and ending of it like i, I like i don't understand why you would and i could tell you she took that fucking kid thing out because it's the only fucking ball she has in her fucking uh, in her pile there. The yep, only yep, thing yep. she can know to throw at her to make her think like, OK, maybe I do am missing something and I shouldn't be here. But like I, I hate I've hated this woman since the first time I saw this movie. <laughs> I have just like, been like, get this lady out of here immediately. Just uh, let people live where they want to live, you fucking goblin. Uh, <laughs> and uh, she is, of course. Uh, Fuck you, Jane. She is bothering. Uh, one of the best to ever do it, Gina Davis. I oh, fucking man. love her in this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, a couple months ago, I got to see, uh, we, spoke, we did a Royal Rid a couple <laughs> last week. Uh, her and Delman Louise is an excellent, excellent oh, performance. Man. Like, that's, a, that's, that's something my, I got to go back to. It's it's definitely <laughs> worth going back to. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite Royal Rid movies, actually, the, is Delman Louise. The Criterion is really beautiful uh, if, yeah. you, if you have a chance to pick it up. Also, the, I, one of my favorite performances of all time, period, uh, is Her and the Fly. It's yeah. absolute oh, devastator. Yep. Like she's great in that. Destroy and, you. And, Long uh, Kiss you, Goodnight. That's a fun movie. Oh yeah, beautiful. She's what's, fun in that. What's oh, the Cutthroat one? Island. Who could forget? <laughs> it? <No>. That's <laughs> where it kind of gets the Reddy Harlan the, guy. The Reddy Harlan years. Uh, <laughs> now, what is the, uh, Earth Girls Are Easy? She's is yes. is a movie that should not work. Uh, and, but it does, she, does. and it barely does. And it it does. But yeah, yes, yes, I know, I see what you're saying. That is kind of a fun movie though. Yeah, it is. Uh, um, she's great. Yeah, she she's she's totally great. She's playing Barbara. So Barbara and Adam, you get. I mean, what's amazing about this the the economic screenwriting here. I mean, thanks to that shithead Jane, we do have some characterization about yes. them. They don't have children through one way or another. You know, she mentions uh, Alec Baldwin mentions in a few minutes from now, like, oh, maybe we should try again during our vacation. Their vacation, such as it is is a stay home and like gussy up our old farmhouse vacation, which they're psyched for. And they're getting each other like vacation presents. Yeah. And like, it is just the, like the perfect way to say like, these are just some normie ass people mm -hmm. with a big ass soon to be haunted house on their hands. You know what I mean? Like there's, you get kind of everything you need about them right away. We should say, I mean, like they're dead in this movie in under 10 minutes. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's a 93 minute movie or something like that is the way you get shit done. Oh, great timing. Yeah. Well, because these kinds of people, and I think this is something he comes back to a lot. These kind of people have already got it all figured out. Like the, yeah. uh, they are like, there is nowhere else for them to go. The only thing that makes them interesting is the fact that they're dead. Now yeah, that they're right. dead, they yeah. are interested. Because I guess you're right. Because they kind of they frame it. It's like, oh, he's a, he's got a hobby of making this uh, model town, and she likes to put up wallpaper. Yeah, and like <laughs> oh, they like, so crafting. like you, might as, you, you might as well be dead, right? Yeah. Do you, think, <laughs> do you think if she knew that she was going to wear this outfit for the rest of eternity, she would have changed it in the morning? Because I didn't think she is dressed mm -hmm. like a, an yeah. ironing board in your grandmother's house, isn't she? It just yeah, she looks exactly like an ironing board in your grandmother's house. Like, yeah. I'm looking at her in that dress, and I'm like, shit, I got to straighten that suit coat I have. Get over <laughs> here, Gina Davis. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you have to dress well for all occasions. Exactly. Uh -huh. Because you are going to die, and you're going to have to be wearing your, your clothes you're well, in now. Yes, you know? exactly. I mean, that's he's Baldwin dies in this, like, black and white checkered uh, uh, like button down that he's got here. It looks like a film noir lumberjack with this <laughs> yeah. fucking thing. Uh -huh. They are like aggressively coded as like New England in this. 
yes, yes. very much. And so. it's what it's Winter Creek, Connecticut. Winter River. Winter, Winter River. Yes, uh, Winter River, Connecticut. Actually, is shot in Vermont, though I think mostly. I think think so. Oh, I'd buy that. You can smell the fucking syrup coming off the screen. Yeah. They they drive by Peter Straub's the dog, who is just this dog, <laughs> who is just the cutest dog in the world. But they they drive by him first, and like it just sort of yep. sets up this dog is around this oh, this uh, covered bridge. Tim Burton loves a covered bridge, um, and uh, they drive past it. We go to Maitland's Hardware. That's Alec Baldwin's job as he owns and operates his own hardware store. Nice. That's, oh God, I never even put that together. They are the Maitlands, and Maitland it's Maitland Hardware. Hardware. How yeah. fucking I, stupid! I, am I love I? that the barber <laughs> is next door and just uh, meandering about like. Uh, oh, it's like oh yeah, and they put that in in eighteen thirty five, and then he's like leaving the store, and he's just like yeah, and he had hair down to here, and we had to cut it. <laughs> See you later, Bill. Like <laughs> that's, oh, that's, old <laughs> Bill the barber like saw the events of the gangs of New York originally. Yeah, this guy, yeah, Bill right. the barber around. used to be Bill the butcher, dude. <laughs> this guy's been around for fucking decades. <laughs> this is the beginning of the screwball comedy. Like you know what I mean? Like that's that's a, it's a great screwball joke. He goes in, he, the guy's talking, and you know he's just like uh huh, Bill, and like. He comes out. The guy's been telling the story the whole time. Let's see you later, Bill. Like, what? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's like you feel the desperation from this guy, Bill, too, because he's like, oh, hey there, Adam. Would you like a haircut today? Oh, <laughs> please. I haven't cut anyone's hair in weeks. And you oh. always think I'm going to outlive that guy. Yeah. But then <laughs> you never do, folks. You, d- you never you never actually <laughs> outlive that a guy. A haunting you thought. Never do. <laughs> That guy is just going to be left. Yeah, because like Danny, he's not even going to have anybody to talk to now. Adam seems like the only one who at least will be right. like, oh, that's a person. Well, I'm just going to waste away my days now. Give the dog a haircut every once in a while against his wishes. I think this guy's <laughs> turning to becoming like the grandpa in Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm. now. It's like, I got Ooh. nobody. I'll start killing. So I make a little family of dead friends in the back of my barbershop that no one goes to anymore. That would be awesome. There'd be more people for the Maitlands to hang out with, you know? Oh, that's true. I, yeah. I similarly don't, don't think this guy can really handle the sledge, though. Uh, mm, he, yeah, he, that's it's, true. It's, true. It, it's just flopping down. It's not, we're he not looks, getting to lift up. He looks like he could barely handle scissors. So I, I yeah. think you're, you're <laughs> totally right. So also, it's too bad the Maitlands do not have any next of kin because those people would be suing whoever is letting this dog run around without a leash. (laughs) Because if this dog were tied up appropriately or with a leash with its owner, it would not be running out in the street. But Andrew, Gina Davis would not jerk the wheel. Life in the country is just dog owners just letting out 50 dogs out the back door. Go, 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 run through town. Yes, I mean, it is true. If you don't have those fucking, uh, like uh, recently we had like a, a, a pretty big blackout around here. And uh-huh. all the electric fences went down. Oh, around- then the dinosaurs got it? <laughs> the raptors got it? No, the dogs were all out in the fucking street. Right. Oh, like, because oh, it's that- like those those underground like your, magnet yes, electric right. fences? Your yeah. problem, Chris, was using the di- the frog DNA when you yes. your dog. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have spliced it. That was I my was issue. A huge thunderstorm and then like this dog paw touches the electric fence <laughs> and nothing happens. I'm, sh- I'm sure that the Paws Corporation had yeah. made that uh, for a-, a big investor meeting. And then Samuel L. Jackson says, hold on to your mutts. Uh, yes. Ooh, that's a good one. You're like, oh, hang on. Excuse me, guys. I have to feed the dogs. And you go into your backyard. <laughs> And there's a huge crane lifting like a bunch of jerky yes. into a, into a yes. paddock. And then you're like, rawr, 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 rawr. and then it comes out and it's all fucked up. We're pitching Clifford the Big Red Dog, dog the movie right now. Yeah, that's, yeah, good. that's true. Because you could do the same thing with the eyeball in, in, in the uh, Jeep. You know what I mean? The Big Red Dog. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Absolutely. I mean, that dog um, would be, you would shoot at that dog if you saw it in the street, right? Oh, Clifford the sure. Big Red Dog. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, so, most people would. Yeah. Any I'd like I'd, dog. I'd, I'd kick back and see where this goes. He's probably you know. eating you afterwards. That yeah. is the problem right there. But like, because I don't think you're penetrating uh, through that. T- you don't oh, think you're t- penetrating the dog oh, with the, the, the guns, bullets. Eric? Okay. I know oh, okay. you got all titillated. I said uh, penetrated. Wait, um, wasn't actually there was that Clifford the Big Red Dog? There movie was. There was. Nobody saw. Nobody saw it. That no. secret movie that didn't exist. Uh, <laughs> but so yes, this dog caused her to jerk the wheel. They. They drive through the covered bridge, and then hilariously, the dog is the only thing keeping their car level, <laughs> and then he jumps off. I, I will tell you who that fucking dog is. Uh, the owner of that dog is fucking Jane. I guarantee mm-hmm. you. Oh, yes. We, yes. we don't see the fucking house that this lady lives in with her and a little goblin daughter. 
But like, I'm sure <laughs> this is that fucking, this is that dog. I love this trope though of the animal, like, you know, keeping you afloat. Like the pelican in True Lies yes. was one of them. There's so many of these oh, examples. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so they're dead. Or yeah. so they learn. They go back into their house. I love that they're all like, wet and gross and they sit down it's like oh who built this fire and then they're like just the weird effect of like gina davis goes to warm her hand and like some of her fingers light on fire like a candle and it's just it's this weird like i mean i guess going back to the idea of like the artifice of the model is like the yeah. first thing we sort of see going into the movie it sets you up to be like this isn't really a grounded reality because like there's no freak out there it's just yes. like huh my fingers are on fire like birthday candles. <laughs> it's almost like a dream, dreamlike yes. state being dead. No, it is. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, that, that's what the dreamy lighting that you get. That, like the house looks totally different. When they come back. Like it's just yeah. like these it's got blue green lighting all over the place. You know what I mean? Like everything is kind of un, unearthly kind of a thing. And then uh, Alec Baldwin decides to go out to see. He wants to retrace their steps because something, something seems wrong. And this is the first time you go to Saturn for no reason, yeah. which is super fun. It's yes. so great. And we've got some uh, little effects here of like Alec Baldwin. Now, this like mostly holds up. It's a little clunky, but it's okay. I was watching on a 4K, so it's very revealing. Right. But I think it's in still a one shot, cool. you could sort of see the green outline around them a little yes. bit. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's still not bad. I'll let it slide. Um, you know, they they their their whole like process of realization is pretty cool because it's like mixes of things like holy fuck sandworms on Saturn or whatever is going on yeah. but then also like uh, they don't have any reflections I love the effect <gasps> shot of Gina Davis with like the little horse and then you, you don't see your hand holding we're, yeah, we're vampires <laughs> <laughs> oh we're gonna have to be bloody we're gonna have to drink blood oh no oh no <laughs> honey um, let's do it I don't but know Barbara, do, you, do, you, do you thirst for human life <laughs> We are the only real evil left. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I opened the curtains and sun came in and I'm fine. So it's not, I don't know. I mean, we're, maybe we're vampires that don't play by all the rules. Oh, hey, I'm sparkling. <laughs> Look at the only real evil left has a house on Archer Avenue. <laughs> Royal Tenenbaum was the only uh, true evil left. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What are you saying, I, Chris? I like the red sky in the background. I like yes. when they've gone out and like, yeah, like this is where we get to introduce. I like how he keeps on bringing us back to the handbook because yeah, yeah. the handbook does play such a huge role in the end. Uh, because I was like, I, I remember early, like when I was there, being like, why do they keep on talking about the fucking book? Like, uh, <laughs> I, it is kind of cool. Like now that I'm older, I kind of like, I kind of wish, like, I'm sure somebody yes. has written it. Oh, and right. I, oh, I would definitely. fucking hate it. But uh, I love but, that it reads like stereo instructions. Yes. They really hammer home. The bureaucracy and the annoyance of being dead, it's almost just as bad as being alive. Yes. Well, the, I, I, the joke is, if they read the book properly, not, none of this would have happened. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yes. they, They're kind of lazy dead people in so far as like, they're just skimming and they're not getting it. And like, if they knew how to be dead, they'd be much better at it. But they just don't. Right. They should realize there's finally time to read. Yeah, time enough <laughs> there at was last. Time now, exactly. <laughs> I love the gag. Uh, Handbook for the Recently Deceased. Well, let me see here. Oh, published by Handbook for the Recently Deceased <laughs> Press. <laughs> the best joke is when he goes, Handbook for the Recently Diseased. And she goes, Deceased, which is kind of amazing. It's just a, a There's it, a little musical cue on that, too. Yeah, it's, it's a very funny little joke. Um, but again, just like, it's just interesting to me that they're not, being dead to them is kind of just like, like this kind of annoying stubbed toe inconvenience. Yes. Like they're just sort of like, oh, geez. I mean, they're not like devastated about it. Like if I woke up, you know, something happened and then I'm like back in my apartment, I'm like, how did I get here? Once I realize like I'm dead, there's mm -hmm. at least that moment of like, oh man, I am fucking dead. Oh, come on. And this you is know? why they had to be like the G Willikers type yes. to like sell this as a comedy. Because if you really right. start thinking about, you know what you're, I mean, this is a fun movie about death, but you don't want your audience to really dwell on death. No. Well, yeah, no. You, you don't want to be like, yeah. oh, no, I'll never see my parents again. Like, oh, they must have been so sad. What was, what was my funeral? No, it's just sort of like, we're dead, ha, rumpf. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, right. a, it's, a, it's a comedic situation. It's exactly. more interesting to be able to play with this as compared to, like, the Dietzes and, like, the bureaucracy of rich people, which is just, hey, can I buy that? Hey, can I buy that? Versus yes. I'm waiting for 9,000 people before me to get into 
uh, limbo to talk to my caseworker. Like right, right, right. <laughs> there are two kinds of uh, living with. I mean, what I think is good. Like I like that they set up the fact that you go out, time beads up. Uh, yeah, that shit's all really cool. Uh, there's all these little notes of things, and like they do pay them off later. It is setting up stuff uh, later, but like it also just adds all this. You can't keep like you can't think of the death stuff so much because it keeps on inventing new little notes yeah. for you to pick up on. And like, right. do, yeah. did you guys read the fucking thing about how the original writers wanted to hear like uh, 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 Barbara like scream while she was drowning? Yes, yes. And it I'm was like, way more intense the original, oh, dr- original draft. Yeah, no I mean, way. And also, yeah, I mean, the drowning itself—that's <laughs> a horrible way to go. I yeah. mean, like, it's a, and they're lucky that they don't. I mean, like, you know, you see the guy with the fucking. The chicken bone in his throat and whatever. They're lucky <laughs> that they had a nice, easy drowning, I guess. Yeah. Wherein they're not waterlogged and purple or whatever. But that's what's interesting, right? Is like even, I mean, again, you ha- you absolutely have to do it this way or else yeah. you futz with the, the, the pH balance of the movie's tone here. But like even the most violent deaths are funny. Uh, arguably one of the most violent deaths, dude who dies smoking in bed yeah. Is one of the funniest moments where he's just yeah. like, you want a cigarette? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to cut back to it. Because it's like, it's this like horribly burned puppet, but he's yeah. smoking. He has a pack of cigarettes. And then his voice is kind of just like sort of high pitched and nerdy. Yeah. Like, it's amazing that it's like the more brutal your death, kind of the funnier you, funnier you are like in the, uh, the Beetlejuice afterlife or whatever. Speaking of Beetlejuice, I do love the way that this movie teases out our man Beetle guys right here. Yeah. Like this first, there's a quick thing where it's like Beetlejuice. You don't even, you do not see him. He's reading a newspaper and it's like, oh, damn sandworms. Oh, d- yeah. sandworm attack up 30, 13%. Better get a job, babe. And him like looking in the obits as like the employment section is really funny. Yes. But you're not like just right away introduced to him. In fact, even the first time when we see him on the TV ad, where he's doing the fake like cowboy thing. Oh yeah. He's got the cowboy so hat on. He's got a big fake mustache. He's got yeah. the sunglasses. Like you can't see any of it until like the biggest reveal of him like flying out into or you know, from the the grave or whatever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, I I like the uh, I like him looking up at the obituaries. I like the fucking when we get back to Lydia the all the little like asides in this are all really funny. Like like her being like there wouldn't be dust in heaven. Like yes, that's, stuff like that just sends <laughs> yeah. me. It's, to this day, I still am just laughing at stuff like that. Yeah, because they don't know they, they're un, they're unclear how long they're going to be dead. What's going on here? Uh, we do see Jane come in. Uh, that son of a bitch, Jane, uh, in a funeral outfit. So clearly, she had been to their funeral. Puts a sold sign on the house because she was doing business that yeah. morning. Oh, by the way, yep, yep, yeah. yep. Oh, oh, what happened? Oh my God. Hello, Charles Dietz. Great yeah, news. Is- Those pesky Maitlands ate shit. You can buy the house now. <laughs> um, yeah, she's I, I just I love that detail too, right? Like she's in the funeral attire, and then the yes. camera just kind of pans like for sale, sold by yes. Jane Piece of Shit Realty or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that's her last name, yeah. Yeah, it's Jane Piece of Shit Realty. <laughs> But that's like uh, a real thing. Yeah. Like I, that also does call. I mean, like of the things that are interesting about like the the connection of death and like real estate and like how it, a, a big a boom it was at the time. It still is, but like at the time, it was everything. You couldn't fucking read about anything but this shit. Uh, I, I like that. The idea is that you die and immediately like the the everything about your personality, everything you built up, is gone. Like is yeah. now property of somebody else. Like yep. immediately, like so. I don't even like. It's funny that they don't even show the funeral. You would think that'd be a cinematic thing. But and if you don't have your shit in order, the next person who comes through does not value the stuff that you valued, and exactly. is going to throw your whole life in the garbage. Oh, definitely, yeah. and you can't dwell on it. That's why you don't have the funeral scene because we're trying to make this light as possible. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Now, now all of a sudden the pedophile's moving into your house, and you got nothing to do. You can't, <laughs> you can't do nothing. You can't even haunt him properly. Uh, but yes, yeah, speaking of pedophiles, this is the Dietzes are uh, moving. It's move-in day. We have Delia. The amazing Catherine O'Hara, uh, who's married to Charles, which is the repugnant Jeffrey Jones. Uh, who's so good at this movie. Sorry. Yes, no, yes, you're right. Yes, I mean, he's yes. dastardly and, and vile, but <laughs> he was good in this movie and others. 
Yeah, and, and, he was good in plenty an, of movies, yeah. And he's an interesting character because he's uh like he's a nerd, but like clearly like something like he's he's burnt, you know, your classic city burnout, like he can't live in the city anymore. He needs peace and quiet and country home and blah, blah, blah. And like I like how Bin Nye, like he's not one of the like he's a villain in this movie insofar as like uh what they're doing to their house, but like he's on the benign side of it. He's just sort of like all he wants to he actually wants to leave their home alone, actually. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which but, is which is great. It it is, but like you also see, I mean, as soon as the the I love the bird watching scene. Yeah. I think you get almost everything about the character <laughs> in the bird watching scene where yeah. like he's he wants to be in this state and like he looks out and like life out here is grosser than you think, uh, meaning a like starved bird gnawing at the entrails of another bird. Yeah, uh, that's pretty great. And, as, and, as, and as soon as he sees it, <laughs> he switches his sight to real estate speculation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. To literally exactly. going back to what he was doing, like a, a form of what he was doing. There's a great gag where he's reading. It's like Practical Homeowner magazine. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's like he starts reading it from the back of the magazine, like mm-hmm. just in this weird. It give it always gives me this this sense of like he's just like play acting like this is what people relaxing in the country do ah reading this magazine it doesn't matter what page i start on because i'm just leafing through a magazine or whatever he's a phony as well but slightly more sincere one than uh the great Catherine o'hara with this this gaudy artist character Oh, oh my god these truly horrible sculptures i absolutely love the guy uh who's the the one mover character who she's like, oh, careful with my sculpture or whatever. And this dude looks at this thing and just throws it on this coffee table. And there's this great <laughs> shot of it like just clanking onto the table. Yes. And she's like Love it. putting it right side up like the way it's supposed to be. But it doesn't matter because it's terrible. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, yeah. And we also get uh, Winona Ryder. This is only like her second or third thing she'd ever did. This is before Heather's, which I would have gotten backwards. Um uh, mm-hmm. but she's yeah, you know, and she's just this like your prototypical and like perfect goth girl acting of just like oh yeah, she's so uh like melodramatic at every turn. I love the suicide note, which we'll get to. <laughs> it's so fucking funny, yeah. uh, even though like it's it's not funny, but it is funny. You it know is what funny. I mean? Like, that's we're having fun with like that goth trope, and she plays and plays it very well. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of I mean. Just bare. I mean, this was a this was a big year for her. Heather's was the same year as this movie. Oh, was it okay? Yeah, they're but they're both eighty eight, yeah. and in between, uh, she had some movie called nineteen sixty nine. Oh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. written and directed by Ernest Thompson. Wow, look at this fucking cast: R. D. J. Kiefer, Bruce Dern, our our love for this month, Joanna Cassidy, and Winona oh, okay. Ryder. <laughs> All right. Right. Wow, heard never of heard of this movie. Wow, yeah. we'll have to watch it and uh, see how great the 60s were. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> uh, it looks to be some sort of uh, anti-Vietnam motion picture. Mm. That's pretty cool. I'm also against that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, a good thing to be against. Know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, take a side now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's smart. Yeah, she's taking a bunch of pictures uh, just... And like she sees, she sees the enormous spider, and she says, "Like I think I could live here," which is kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the great Glenn Shaddix yes. doing as Otho yes. doing this great entrance of like he's falling through the window, and yes. like Jeffrey Jones is like, "Oh, Otho, why don't you just use the front door?" And he's like, <laughs> "Well, everybody knows that that's bad luck." And you're like, "Is it Otho?" Oh my okay. god! And Catherine O'Hare is like, "Otho, I'm so happy you left the city for me." Of course you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love Otho as a character is great. Because, you know, a lot of movies, you have the, the heavier set guy is a punching bag for jokes. Yes. But this is like an alpha dude version of that. And the jokes play differently. Yeah. I mean, it's a guy who not only like thinks he's above everybody, like he firmly believes it, like believes yeah. it to be true that he's better than all these people. Like you should be oh so happy to be in the presence of me. Otho and all yeah. the like details that like they drop throughout this movie, just little breadcrumbs about like Otho's life before yes. this movie and all the things that he's dabbled in and whatever. Oh, the, the living yes. theater, 
<laughs> living theater. Uh, a paranormal reset researcher in New York City until the bottom fell out in 72. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? The ghost stopped? <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess it, maybe the uh, it'd be funny if that, uh, the bottom dropped out in '84. Once the Ghostbusters yep. showed up, that was the end of it. There you go. Absolutely, dude. Like oh, once those pesky Ghostbusters started hitting the town and staying up all night dancing with models, then the bottom fell out. <laughs> they just once- sopped up all the business, so you couldn't get any work doing any of the research. It was all their stuff. Had my friend from the EPA shut down their containment unit. <laughs> Essentially, Barbara, once the once the marshmallow man stepped through St. Patrick's Cathedral, it was all over for me and goes. <laughs> I was packing up the office that very night. Uh, uh, I love them walking around the house with cans of spray paint and they're just yes. spray painting the names of colors they want to paint the walls. And yes. she's she spray paints uh, like mauve all over yeah. the wall. And it's like, oh my God, you read my mind. Yes. <laughs> and this room, Viridian, blue green. You know, I was a chemist briefly. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the hair, hair chemist or something. Yeah. And I, I do think it's also, he's also the interior decorator. And he's yes. clearly like, I mean, Glenn Shinnix was gay. He's coded as like sort of more than likely a gay character. But like, yeah. that's not the joke ever. Except. No. The best one is uh, when he's like, well, I, I myself am interested in the paranormal. And that woman that's giving him shit is like, is that what they're calling your kind these days? Oh, <laughs> Dude, yeah, that is. A re- I, I only caught that this time around. And I was yes. like, what did you just say to him? <laughs> David Burns, real life ex-wife. I, I don't really- know if I would yeah. ever. I can't imagine when I would get the chance to do this. But I, I really want I want to be able to tell somebody. Uh, oh, never mind her. She, her her sister got a house dropped on her. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that is pretty fucking. And great. O'Hara's nervous laughter at that, thinking that like the rest of the room would erupt and they don't. It was yeah, just it's crickets. so good. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, but yes, yeah, so he. But look, yeah, he's he's the. Uh, they're going through all their crap. Ozzy and Harriet, we're having fun there. Oh, right, the wedding clothes tosses that. She makes some kind of like ick kind of noise. Yes. So funny. Yeah. I do love when she like shrieks because basically, uh, what do you call it there? Uh, Jeffrey Jones wants to keep the study the same and she just gives him this. And, and it's a classic Catherine O'Hara fucking bringing it monologue about like, if you don't let me do this, I will go insane. And like the, the levels she gets of manic insanity oh, yeah. in that monologue are, are just priceless. The take you with me will be yes. imprinted. It will be one of the last <laughs> things I think about before I die. Like I, I will just be there. I will just pop in there. I do love the great uh, moment here. So this is like Adam and uh, 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 Barbara are like, all right, let's try to scare them out of the house. Like, that's what we're going to do. And so when they're going around looking through the rooms and what they're going to paint or whatever, this is a really great moment of you open the door and there's Gina Davis pretending to be hanged in, yes. in the closet and she rips her face off. And Catherine O'Hara screams, but it's because like it's just this gross closet, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. The the constant shitting on the house is great. Like walking through the bathroom. Oh, look, an indoor outhouse. <laughs> oh. Deli- uh, deliver me from LL Bean. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so great about Burton here is the horror is actually pretty fucking freak freaky. Like, oh. These effects mm-hmm. belong in like the people under the stairs or like, yeah. oh, yeah. seriously, what you would call it? The dude uh, coming up in a little bit, the guy uh, who is the road roadkill guy, oh, roadkill that, guy. Yeah, that, that, that's flattened out and like as a pancake. And he's like, I feel a little flat. <laughs> that dude belongs in society like that. That, <laughs> yes, that yes. effect is as gross as anything Brian Hughes never did. But it is just on the kooky side because of the, of the script and the way it's filmed. Well, well yeah. exactly. Like it, the way that this whole thing is lit, it, yes. the color palette, like it's not ooky, you know. And yes. then the amazing Elfman score is so not a horror movie score that there's there's none of the other things that you need in a scary moment to have that shit happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's it's this really interesting thing when you're watching this movie and you are seeing all this horrific stuff. Yeah. And just none of it matters. Like, you know, the uh their um uh, uh little assistant lady there Juno yeah she has she's an old woman who was murdered by having her throat cut yeah. and you can see the cut throat and everything like that and it's just funny when smoke is billowing <laughs> out of her throat you're not at all like ooh scary you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean 
I mean, it, it, it just, and it fits Tim Burton so perfectly. I mean, that's your, uh, what do you call it there? Um, Night Before Christmas, the same thing where it's like spooky, ooky, but funny and kids can still enjoy it kind of a thing. You know and what it, I mean? It comes at right at a time when like also people are starting to like the, the church is losing people. Like they're starting to really bleed out. We're open to a vision of fucking at the afterlife that isn't ruled by like good and evil, but like does you can't escape who you are even when you die. Like you're still, this yeah. personality is still with you and you have to either decide to grow out or be exercised or like do nothing and just live and in this is, house. Yeah. And it is kind of interesting, right? Like Gina Davis makes one, it's the only time in the movie, I believe the only reference to, she's like, well, this isn't heaven and this isn't hell. Like what's going on. And then like, that's it. Yeah. Any yeah. notion of like a Judeo Christian, whatever. No. Nope does not exist in this movie it's no. paperwork it's waiting online it's having a caseworker. you know being dead sucks just as much as being alive does. exactly I, but actually it's, i was thinking about it because like you know there's so much horror in tim burton but he never actually really made a horror movie the closest i think is probably sleepy, sleepy hollow Hall sleepy hollow yeah because yeah. you got like yeah. real gore in that movie and there's like real kills Real intentionally uh, frightening sequences. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like I, I think that might be it. I don't know. Like I, I you know, like As Sweetie Todd's Sweetie the musical, Todd, almost. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of it. And yeah, you're right. You can't be scared by that movie because you're falling asleep through the whole fucking thing. So <laughs> I am well, not. You but... can't because I'm singing. That's right. <laughs> I does. am now singing. It has it's good, awful. It has good blood and gore, I, I guess. Does. But yeah, to your point, it's not really a horror movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty gushy. I remember yeah, it being you know, pretty. It, it goes there. I mean, I, I, that's to me, that is the last good one for me. Oh, yes. Uh, so I, I that's the that. last one where I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this. Uh, the singing is whatever. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> most of everything else I'm pretty great with. I mean, to, to Burton's credit, like, yeah, he could probably do a horror movie. And a lot of guys that trade in his kind of visual aesthetics in a way do that. But the fact that he just applies it to like, you know, superhero uh, well, movies that, or like kind of yeah, thriller yeah, yeah. type of things. It's cool. Right. Well, that's, I mean, that's, I think that's what this movie's about is that he doesn't want that stuff really. Yeah. Like it maybe that was just something like by 99, he had had like the fucking miracle run. He had been doing it for so long. And then like, yeah. 99 CP Hall comes by. He's like, why not do a little fucking gothic horror? Why not have a little fun yeah. here? Why well, not? I'll, I'll, go, I'll go hammer with it. Yeah. For a bit, see why how not? That goes. I, I would me. push back actually, Chris, you said that Sweeney Todd's the last good one. I mean, Maybe for you, because I, I don't think it's a good one, but I think that that Dark Shadows movie is, is pretty right on. I remember I like, liking it. I like Dark Shadows and the Frank and Weenie remake enough, but like Sweeney yeah. Todd was the last one. I was like, oh, you should see the Tim Burton movie. Like, I wasn't yeah. doing that for Dark Shadows. Uh huh. Oh, I was doing that for Dark, because I was like, he's doing it again. I hated that fucking Sweeney <laughs> Todd, but he's doing it again. Look, yeah. it's a movie that he was like born to make. Yeah, yeah. And that, that Wednesday thing, I'm sure, I know mm. you kids love it. And it's like, oh, Tim Burton's directing it. And you look at it, it's like, this is just a CW show. Like, it just, it's yeah. directed. Oh, it really? like, no, I mean, it's not, what directed, it it's not directed. It's not directed very interestingly. Like, it's, no. there's nothing like, that's like, oh, shit, Tim Burton directed that. Like, he, I've been saving it. that. And that goes on and on forever that maybe when <laughs> I'm a, a ghost, I can get to it. He is specifically one of those people that I think the digital taking over really robbed him of what was his gift. Like, yeah. the things that he, like, roping in these production design and like making it look like a world like that with shadows and actual that you like, I, I, I always harp on it. Real stuff, with real light. Like sure. those, that was his thing. Once he got digital, it really started melting away really quick. Yeah. Uh, I can't that's, say that's, anything on the Wednesday. I mean, I do still want to see it because I like Jenna Ortega and I like the Adams family more or less. Sure. Although I refuse to watch those animated movies. He only directed the first four of them. Okay. If, but if even, that's yeah. worth anything. I um, will say, uh, but Chris, or Eric, actually, you just brought, brought up an interesting point. Like, that would be like if they had a TV, if the Maitlands had a TV and a net, like, oh, yeah. all, right, I guess, all right, Barbara, I guess we could finally watch Wednesday. Now, what else are we going to do? <laughs> we'll find, all right. There's no getting out of it this time, Barbara. We've oh. got eternity. We're going to watch Wednesday. But the problem is your, your Netflix password might expire. You really have to uh, piggyback. You should get Jane's logins. You're blowing my <laughs> mind. Dude, that's how they get. So that's, I, that's how you get the numbers from Red Notice and the Gray Man. 
being like the <laughs> movie that everybody's ever watched. <laughs> it's, it. it's you've got you've, everybody who's dead has a Netflix account and they can You're all right, fucking watch dude. this shit. You're totally right, Chris. <laughs> Barbara Ryan Gosling's in it. We like Ryan Gosling, don't we? <laughs> and Captain America. I mean, I, he does other stuff that was good, but Captain America, come on. Come on, Barbara. We have to help these Netflix numbers. It can't possibly just be all those stream farms in China or whatever. <laughs> Get streaming, Barbara. We're just here to stream some ghosts. <laughs> I love um, yeah, so they have the uh, their, their first little dinner in the house. And this Catherine O'Hara line, I think, sums up this character beautifully. <sighs> Are we really eating Cantonese? Is there no Szechuan up here? Oh, oh my yeah. god! Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, uh, that line is great, and there, I will give it a. Uh, it's a pair. There's a. It's one of a pair, which is when Marissa Tomei walks out in Alabama in the beginning of My yes. Cousin Vinny, and she's got the camera, and she goes, "Well, I bet the Chinese food here is terrible." <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just an incredible fucking line. <laughs> And it's true, you and know. And it's she's true. totally, she's totally right. Uh, oh my god! How much batter are you putting on that chicken before you fry it? <laughs> uh, it's like yeah. cake with chicken in the middle. <laughs> oh shit! Now you're gonna me make me order Chinese food right now, <laughs> which will be terrible, but it would be good at the same uh, time. Um, so the big move in day where it's like <laughs> we're both moving things in and out of this house at the yes. same time seems like a mistake, but whatever. Um. This is where Lydia first, she's going around taking pictures of all the movers and yada, yes. yada. She spots the Maitlands up in the attic window. I think this is probably, maybe it's like, cause I watched four psycho movies in the span of five days last week or whatever. <laughs> sure. But like the image of like people up in a window where there should not be people is one of the freakiest things to oh, me. Yeah. So uh, to me, this is kind of like the A number one freakiest <laughs> shot in the is, movie. Is that just Michael Jordan up there? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. Oh, my um, God. But yeah, all these movers driving Jeffrey Jones and Catherine O'Hara crazy is all really, really funny. And then the Maitlands like see that Lydia saw them and it's like, that little girl down there saw us. Let's go get her before it's too late. That little piggy down there saw us. <laughs> hey, little piggy, did you see us? The little pig shutterbug just spied us. <laughs> wave, yes, wave at the piggy. Barbara, wave at the piggy. Barbara, Barbara, turn off red notice. I know we love it so much, but <laughs> if you look at the window, there's a little girl out there. Oh, wait, Barbara, quick pause it. It's going to autoplay into the next episode of Wednesday. Look, there's a pig out here. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think we should watch the, the Spike Lee one. Let's just watch the gray man again. <laughs> Let's good, go dubs. Good news, Lydia. We decided to let your family stay here and watch red notice with us. <laughs> Ah! Uh, the fucking uh, Jane the Realtor shows up again yes. and uh, gives her. Oh man, I love a good skeleton key thing in yeah. a movie. She's yes. like, now this is the skeleton key to the whole big house, young lady. Give this to your father. Well, yeah, we should say the, the Maitlands have locked themselves in the attic because that's the only place that they can uh, control as their own. Right. Um, I think around here, you know, she she gets skeleton. She, she tries to get in there. They're holding her back. And this is what Alec Baldwin's like. They're like, you know, all these people are ruining our house because now we're also we're, we've got the the re, the revamp crews are in and like we're yes, we're, we have the great uh, it's a great foreshadowing of what happens at the end of the movie. Yes. Catherine O'Hara gets like s slammed by her own sculpture against a wall. Right. This big, yes. Like, yes. My and art it, is dangerous. It breaking through the window <laughs> while Jeffrey Jones is making coffee is also wonderful. Yes. Is that oh, what's yeah, happening at your house right now, Eric? Is yes, that how this yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, been, I'm just, yeah. I'm picturing Eric putting like a little tea kettle on the faucet, <laughs> filling up with water, just like. <laughs> can, can I crash. ask you, Eric, is, yes. are there people like with this? Are there people out on your lawn gawking at all the shit you're doing? Oh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. I'll share, That's I'll share with you later, but the, the Google image of my house is so fucking funny. <laughs> it, it looked like, oh, it looked like fucking shit. It looks, oh, uh, like, it looks like <laughs> tourists are stopping at the Dietz's house just because to look at this. Dude, this is small town living, Chris Cabin. Sure. Like, you see this, this you know, Winter River uh, town here, okay? And like these city freaks moving into the <laughs> dead people's house. Yeah. That's the, that's the social event of the year as far as the, these people are concerned. The drowned people's house, man. That's, yes. <laughs> I guarantee you people, that's what's funny is people, what if they had to, 
oh 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 shit, Barbara, we have to. I guess we have to. We have to haunt the lake. We're lake ghosts now, Barbara. Yeah, that would be Ooh, awesome. Get yeah. a boat going, dude. Fucking with fishermen. That is what I want. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> early morning. Just breaking their line every time you get just like wrapping yes. around your hand and just rip it. Oh, oh no, yeah. it's the Maitlands again. Just let me catch a darn fish. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a noir detective and she looks like my grandmother's ironing board. <laughs> you boring ass ghosts, get out of here. All I want to do is craft. <laughs> I want to model. <laughs> I want to sell uh, people hammers for crying out loud. You know, I bet she's got a pretty good body underneath. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Stupid ironing board ghost. Good point, I, Steve. I bet everyone would want to get under her sheets. Well, that's exactly. uh, that's what I was wondering is can you get, can you get, I know you can't change your dresses or anything like that, but can you get undressed hmm. when you're a ghost? Well, I mean, I would say possibly because there is the, the fucking ridiculous shot of uh, when they're, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but when they're having that conversation, he's like, uh, let me talk to my wife in private, Beetlejuice. And like they turn around. <laughs> yeah. Beetlejuice definitely like takes a stick and lifts her skirt up. So oh, like, right. okay. oh, there's yeah. still like panties on the top. Yeah. 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 Okay. What, but are, are, are they Night of the Living Dead under there is the question. Right. All blood <laughs> and pus. Because Beetlejuice uh, would be into that big but, time. I mean, Chris, is, you got a great point about the nudity situation. And I always thought, I think I've floated this before on the show, that. If you die naked, like don't sleep naked, because then you're getting the full sheet. I think sure. Oh, that's I when see. like the gods and stuff are just like, dude, you gotta do some a sheet. Yeah, that's like I mean the one guy in Night of the Living Dead. There's like the naked zombie. You just see some dude's fat Western PA ass in that movie. Just like, well, I'm a zombie and I'm naked. The beautiful ass. It's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Are are they able to fuck? I guess it's kind of what we're also kind of circling around as I, a married yeah. couple here. You must it be if Beetlejuice be is fucking. Them. I mean, if yeah, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is fucking. Yeah, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice wanting to- does want to fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he says it's been 600 years. Mm, that's true. But but, that, mean, but who wants to fuck Beetlejuice? If yeah, you have Gina it, yeah. Davis and, and Alec Baldwin, you're going to get fucking. Right. You know, you're going to get down to fucking. Right. Fuck now, but it, now, w- could it produce a ghost child of some kind? Mm. Probably not, right? No, that, that I think is. You need to steal a human child right. uh, through your uh, inhabitors for some reason. Right. They, what, what they raise do with, her. Somehow. Yeah. What they do with Lydia, mesmerize yes. a young child and <laughs> bring it under your tutelage. Well, or otherwise, you're just two people that are way better parents to yes. her than the actual parents. We should say, though, Catherine O'Hara, so, 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 stepmom. Ooh, yes. I could watch yes. that all day. Oh. Um, so they're, they're freaked out. They see the Beetlejuice cartoon or the commercial rather. Yes. And it's like, uh, you know, it, it is, it is cool that you, st- you see him, but it's not really in close up, and he's in a disguise and it's like at the end of the rope, once again, what are we going to do? Let's consult the guide. Oh, in case of emergency, draw a door. Yes, I love yes. the, I love yes. the way Alec Baldwin just kind of like drags that line out. Just like draw a door. Uh, apparently he's not happy with his performance in this movie, which is what? interesting. Well, because that's what he was he talking about, a, AB. I, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. He's not a piece of shit. Like, yeah, he's not. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have that energy and married with the uh, married to the mob and uh, working girl, like where he yes. is a sleaze fucking bag. Uh, or like, I mean, even I mean, the 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 king of it all, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. My God. Oh, oh sure. yeah. Uh, Tim cut my scene where I called the little girl a pig. <laughs> You're going to have brass balls to haunt a house. <laughs> <laughs> Always be ghosting. It turns out he's kind of right because their soft shoe haunting routines yes. do not work on these people. Yeah. And that's yeah. what they, keeps the movie cutesy and fun. The whole sheets thing and Lydia's taking Polaroids of it. Yeah. This, totally. They draw a door. They finally get to the other side, which is this hilarious waiting room. Uh, Civil servants in the afterlife, you get this woman uh, who explains that A, they should have read their book, B, they don't have an appointment, and they they have they have to haunt this house for 125 years, and they only have three to four credits, help credits in in that timeline. So you don't want to waste them all now, kind of a thing. Dude, this is some real like who wants to be a millionaire shit with these lifelines and whatnot. Yes. <laughs> um I love, yeah, the the woman who's the receptionist is like Miss Argentina, who's yes. like c- cut her wrists uh, to suicide, which is pretty crazy. Good suicide joke here. If I had known what I know now, I wouldn't have had my little accident. She shows the wrists. The the waiting room erupts in laughter because there are also dead people from Uh, mishaps. But it's great because she's like, 
because I think uh, what GNT was like, this is what happens when you're dead. It's like, no, this is what happens when you're dead. This is what happens when he's dead. This is what happens when he's dead. Uh, and that's what she yeah. says. Like, if, I, I, if I knew what I know now. There is a great callback to this later in the movie at, at dinner with Otho and I think yes. Robert Goulet or whatever. And, oh, you know, if you commit suicide in the afterlife, you become a civil, ser- you su- civil servant or whatever. Yeah. It's, oh, you're and, right. It's yeah. and Otho's right. Yeah, Otho's right. He did, Before the bottom <laughs> fell out in 72, he knew some shit. <laughs> he was asking some questions. <laughs> Well, I'll help you, Kojak. Sure, there's a wolf man loose. Let's go find him. <laughs> wow, what's that, Kojak? You're looking for Jack the Ripper, eh? Well, let's go rip some clues together. There's a pig Ray stands. <laughs> that pig. Hello, Ray. Yeah, they got this contentious relationship. Oh, you're going to open a bookstore. Isn't that cute? Well, we're going to be real researchers and go out to the field, you fucking pig. No, 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 no. Don't don't talk to him, Kojak. He's trying to put us out of business. <laughs> Arrays of cult books. Yeah, did you notice they started adding astrology? <laughs> I don't think it's going very uh, well. Occult books. I don't know a cult that would have him. <laughs> I, oh, man. That's the thing. It's like, yeah. I know they're doing a sequel to this movie. I yeah, don't know sure. what the fuck it's going to be like. I don't know if it's going to work at all. Probably not. But man, Otho, that's a character. It's too bad Glenn <sighs> Shadix has departed, but I know. I know. Yeah, and you know what? Please, please, Tim Burton, don't take a note from a dude I know you don't give a shit about, Jason Reitman. <laughs> Jesus. And fucking put a ghost Glenn Shadix yeah, in this. No, he's helping no, 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 to no, no, hold no. the handbook in the fucking yeah. end of the movie. Dude, no. like, he can't. He can't even talk, and it's just like Mur. they'd make him like make some ghost noise. I I haven't bothered watching the trailer to the Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. No. Great fucking title, by the way. Oh, brilliant title! Is this a Jurassic Park movie? What is I that title? No, I have no idea, but I have not watched oh, I it do. yet. Yeah, I sure. didn't watch it either. Um, okay. Are we bringing H. Ramis's ghost back for that one? You know is they are. You know I, they are. I, I th- I, this is the thing. So the Frozen Empire thing is uh, like essentially ice takes all over Manhattan. Like the whole Manhattan becomes. Okay. And if you'll remember at the end of that stupid fucking mo- the last one, the afterlife one. Yeah. Harold Ramis looks kind of frozen when he is no, as the ghost. It. So <laughs> I think it is. I think you're going to explain the Ramis thing. There's going to be more Ramis shit. I will probably lose my mind. <laughs> when I, Egon turns the camera and his mouth opens like a talking cat. I froze to death in the Manhattan Ice Age. <laughs> and Eric Roberts as the voice of Egon yes. Spengler. I would love that, please. I oh, mean, like, can, like, just let that man be dead. I, it's a great yeah. idea to let that man be dead. He's not even, you know what, dude? You want to bring your own father back for your own movie? That's fine. Sure. This, this bring guy back to the really, directing chair. My God. Like, heaven forbid, <laughs> heaven forbid someone was cool to you as a kid. Well, I used to like Harold Ramis, so I'll just bring him back. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I really, so... if they do that to Glenn Shaddix, I will. If you have to do, if you have to recast an Otho, just make it, get, get Give Paul Walter Hauser some oh. money and have him oh. be the son of Otho. Oh my Dude, god! Dude, yeah, Botho, absolutely. <laughs> Let's do that. He That's just fine. comes in as Botho. Oh, maybe he's like, I didn't want to take up my dad's profession, so I'm Botho the birthday clown or there something like right, that. Yeah, and then he's killing kids and burying them under the basement. There you go. I will say the one advantage that the Beetlejuice world has to maybe combating that idea of like a ghost Otho is like. As we see from this movie, ghosts don't appear like that in this world. They just yes. look like people. And they're yeah. contained to one area, right? They're they're very much contained to one area, absolutely. But I mean, I could see something like, oh, let's go to Otho's apartment for whatever reason. But like, you can't have that because in, in the world of this movie, ghosts are just people yes. walking and talking. They're not... Yes cartoonish in any way they don't have a glow about them that's uh, that to me is really where we're probably going to have an issue with this new Beetlejuice is because it's not like unless Burton stipulates he's like it's got to be physical it's got to be like uh, Hmm. it's got to be makeup no, no CGI digital shit, and that's not happening. You I think really gonna don't think glo- it's going to be a glow up. It, it is. It's just going to be CGI creatures <laughs> yeah. and shit. Well, it's he's, not going to be because he's yeah he's not above. He CGI loves this point. Stuff. He loves CGI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, Dumbo them, is mostly CGI. Them Alice in Wonderland movies are all oh, CGI oh. for the most part. <laughs> I love so like they're looking for the caseworker. They 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 come across uh, the the uh, the exercised ghosts who are like these 
the dead of the dead. That's death for the dead. And, you know, really cool kind of setting up that there, there are stakes in this world. Things, bad things can happen to dead people. Oh, it's true. Right. And we walk into what and I, I just I love this reveal of the new uh, Maitland home is just like. Barbara, I think we're home, and it's just—it's just, it's just yeah. really—I don't. It's—it's it's kind of creepy. It I, is I creepy love because yeah. it's this yuppified, like nineteen late eighties, like art scene where it's like you're even making like the you're painting like the door is like this like almost stone esque look when they're yes. not yes. that. It's just—it's so tacky and ridiculous and over the top, and that's the point. That's part of the joke. Yeah, I mean, I—I and- I, I also like that. Like, it's it, it again goes back to the idea of like. Your how like their whole life is their house, like the stay at home thing and all that. And once that takes over by somebody else, it can be completely changed. And like everything that was you is no longer you. Right. I read it. One of the alternate endings was apparently they end up living in their models like small and uh, they have the whole house there the way they wanted it. That's also kind of a a, a cool yeah, idea. No, that's yeah. that's interesting enough. I do love not to to backtrack too far, but just. Before they walk through the door back into the new house, the hallway that they go down, so 100% German expressionism. Oh, yeah. I love all these Ooh. fucked up angles. Yeah. You know, it looks like when Springfield rebuilds the Flanders house, like, come on in. <laughs> this is your master bedroom. <laughs> all that shit, like the hallway to nowhere kind of stuff. It all looks really cool. Uh, but yeah, this is another way that we learn because <clears throat> we have the first hint when Alec Baldwin leaves the house when he says he's going to go check out, you know, the bridge or whatever. And she's like, oh, you think you were gone for a few minutes. You were actually gone for hours. This is after all their time in the office, they come back through the house. They meet Juno here in the house and she tells them they've been gone for three months. And that's yes. it's such a cool way yes. to push forward the yeah. story, push forward uh, the set. Like we don't have to see the remodeling or the reno and whatever. It just is because the time passed. Very it's- cool. And she is, I mean, short of Michael Keaton himself, with the amount of screen time she has, she fucking rules this movie. Definitely. Uh, I love her so much. My favorite, a line that always cracks me up is when the, uh, when the, when the, 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 uh, what do you call it? The football players are bothering her. And she's like, bathroom. Are you kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) Her like just absolute frustration with all of her clientele is just really funny. Um, The fuck? Uh, Sylvia Sidney, of course, is uh, the actress's name. Thank God you didn't die in Italy. Oh, Oh, right. (laughs) She also maps out like, dad, you don't have to don't call on Beetlejuice. Uh, Don't say his name. Beetlejuice used to be her assistant, which is pretty yeah. great. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, he used to work for me. He was too much of a troublemaker. Do not call on this guy. Uh, she's like, if you want to remove the Dietzes, you got to do it yourselves. And they're like, but how? And she just yes. vanishes. And then is like this great reminder that like, oh, there is this guy, Beetlejuice, who's like, you've seen him in the trailer. Mm-hmm. He's on the poster and everything, but you have not really seen him in this movie yet. Here's just like, a tease of him is like you get this POV in the attic and like when the camera starts moving, you realize, oh, it's like POV the fly. Okay. Yes. The fly lands on the model. And then it's like you just see Beetlejuice's hands like coaxing the fly, which he then just eats this gigundo size to him fly. And that's yes. all you're getting a Beetlejuice for a little while longer. But it's very cartoony, like holding up yes. a giant Zagnut bar. This is like Bugs yes. Bunny level top, stuff. It's great. Top tier product placement in this. I just love <laughs> it. This, this Zagnut looks perfect. Can you buy a Zagnut bar in 2023, by the way? I, I think that it's it, coming in a, in a, in a, in a variety pack. Is or guess. if you like Ooh. go to a special, like a store that's just candy, like uh-huh. a, a dedicated candy store. Like a Dylan's type situation, I bet you sure. Could buy yeah, one. Yeah. It does look like you could buy it, but it, to Steve's point, it looks like an eighteen count box. Ooh, ooh, that, that's a lot of Zagnut yeah. bar. I don't <laughs> think I've ever had one, honestly. Crunch, pretty good. Pretty crunchy good. peanut they're... butter toasted coconut. This yeah. sounds pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I, not I too like shabby. Them. I'm always, I've always been a fan of like the unpopular candy bars, and that's one that you just you really don't see anymore. Also, the thing that's cool about him eating the fly and all these other little moments where he's like peppered a little bit before you officially meet him. It totally wipes out that feeling of when are they getting to the fireworks factory? Yes. Because the movie keeps reminding you like, yeah, he's here. Don't worry about it. We did not forget about Beetlejuice. He's in this movie. 
we'll get there. Here's like a little little taste. Here's a little bite of the Zagnet bar before we mm. actually debut Beetlejuice. Um, around here is where we meet Robert Goulet as Maxi, <laughs> which I guess is like Charles Dietz's old boss or still yeah. current boss, maybe. Something, uh, something re- real estate developer tycoon. It's billionaire. like this yes. New York yeah. yuppie scene. Like, um, but Catherine O'Hara at one point says, "Like, Lydia, you're the only person eating dinner here tonight that wasn't in Vanity Fair." Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just the um, big social scene of New York. Great, like matte painting of the Chrysler Building in the background of him. Oh yeah, Maxie's got a fucking cool office. It looks like. Um, and his whole thing is like, oh, you know, Charles wants Max to come up to Connecticut to see that town because his whole thing. Not only does he want to like turn this house into something, his whole notion of like. I just want to buy this whole small town in Connecticut and turn it into a gigundo tourist compound of yes. some kind. Yes. Is so great. Just expansion, just constant expansion, no, never stopping. <sighs> but, which They're also is hilarious because that, that's, that's exactly against his initial idea, yes. right? It's like, I just yes. want peace and quiet, blah, blah, blah. Right. No, no, no. There's, there's money to be had. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. These. They're scum. They're yuppie scum, we could say. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think it's also because uh, Delia is is continuing her stuff and is hasn't changed at all from the city. So he he thinks they're going to change together, right? He gets there and he's like, come on, we did this as a unit. And the fact that she doesn't, like, it right. makes him be like, I'm going to go back to a version of what I was doing, which is just rapaciously eating up real estate everywhere I go because I have millions of dollars in my large ass. This is when uh, the Maitlands... To scare them are doing a classic routine, which is the sheets over <laughs> the body. And oh, it is a ca- number one ghost material, dude. Yeah. Oh, think, and, of, you know, think of them as death shrouds. Yes. Alec Baldwin's <laughs> uh, own assessment of his performance, Be Damned, him saying, we're ghosts, <laughs> cracks me up every time. It's, it's so just funny. So, it's just, it's, he's a lame guy and he's a lame fucking ghost. Like, that's what it yep. is. Yeah. It's they're so moaning great. and Lydia's like banging on the wall. Stop fucking. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. that's really great like oh here they're up to it again i've heard it's definitely a, i've heard this before which is pretty Yikes. great <laughs> yeah uh and i love this little detail of delia uh as lydia tells uh the maitlands right she's gone to bed with uh prince valium for the evening <laughs> yes. yes but she's passed out watching pro wrestling which <laughs> is just it's another one of those like really weird elements but it's like why not? Like, just add another ridiculous thing to this, and it still works. To be fair, she could have fallen asleep to silk stockings, and then they replayed Monday Night Raw. Yeah, after. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, you know the lineup. You, know, you were doing it. <laughs> you know what's up, then. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so Lydia sort of bumps into them in the hallway here, and she. this is a weird... She thinks that her father and stepmother are doing ghost sex role-playing, uh-huh. and the... The move for this kid is to just start snapping as many photos as uh-huh. possible. <laughs> oh, f- to do what with? I don't know exactly. Yeah. If I if I lived in a house with those pieces of art, I would also be assuming this. When I woke up, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this is a sex thing. Great. These photos, I mean, they look cool because you see the no legs, but then they kind of become a MacGuffin a little bit because Juno's like, hey, don't forget about those photos. You got to get back. We ne- The movie never gives a shit enough really to focus no. on that, but that is a little plot point. Right. You lost you lost the photos. You lost the guidebook because Otho got that. Like the the whole notion of like you can't, like the the living cannot have confirmation about what is on the other side, yes, yes. so you have to go do those things. Yeah, there's never really any kind of like mission about that or closure in any way. You're but, totally right. But you also know, like, and, and that there's like clearly like they don't put any urgency on that. Like that's what I would be that's definitely yeah. worried about in a sequel is that that would become the thing. Like that it has to be a a, a, a surge for the movie, the narrative. Narrative has to go around that like we can't find it has to be a men in black thing. Yeah. Clearly they have they have fucked it up before. Like clearly there's been little signs of the afterlife in some way, but like they don't really care that much, but they don't want it out there. Like it's a very right. specific tone to hit. But it, what you're saying there is interesting though, because like the movie, of course, doesn't really have a clock on it in no. Any, no. any real way, which is nice. It's not yes. like 
you got to get those photos back in your possession yes. before the week is up or else you'll dissolve into the ether or something. I mean, it is loose, right? Because it's like yes. these people are dead and they want these people out of their house. They're going to be around as ghosts for 125 years. That's a yes. slow clock. That's like they, yes. that's not exactly super urgent. They add a clock. The only clock they give is the fu- when uh, Otho does the exorcism and like yes. they immediately kill the clock, like literally yeah. immediately right, right. kill it. Uh, uh I do like this detail about they're talking about the photos or whatever. And uh, Adam is like, oh, well, yeah, it's just like that time I had that photo of Bigfoot <laughs> or, or, or or no, it's it's Barbara says something about this is just like your ridiculous photo of Bigfoot or whatever. And he goes, Bigfoot is a completely different story, <laughs> which is because that's like I hear him, I hear Alec Baldwin say that. and I'm like, here's the thing. This week, <laughs> yeah. We're talking about Bigfoot. It's a completely <laughs> different story. Tom six to you. Tom, you're a genius. What do you think about Beetlejuice? You think I was okay in that? <laughs> oh, it's the most perfect performance outside of what was it? Miami Heat? No, Miami <laughs> Blues. That is the movie that was fabulous. I should have ever seen Miami Blues. Fun movie. Yeah. It's another him playing a scumbag. It's great. Oh, yeah. that. Um, so here we go. The first time Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. They yes. say it. The Maitlands go into the model. I love this whole thing of like, we got to dig him out of this grave. And I, it's great that the movie keeps the world of the model. It's just you're on this model. And it's not like all of a sudden you're in this real world. Because yeah. when they're digging shit up, it's like cork board and yes. egg crate foam it's and amazing. all the stuff that he uses to make the model. It's very, uh, because these things, some of them are like, larger than life or whatever it gives this like kind of honey i shrunk the kids vibe it's like yes hu- you know, human-sized people just around all this like gigundo cork board and whatever it's pretty cool uh here comes beetlejuice really like he knows the movie like it just i love the 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 the, the flying and his arms and legs are dancing <laughs> he's just oh yeah so thrilled dude. to be here and, and he's, he's like uh, kind of dressed like a cabbie Oh, Michael Keaton's so goddamn good in this movie. He really is. Uh, that is, oh my God. Like, the, the best thing about this character is that you don't really know anything about, like, he. this is when he does the the great, like, uh, do you have any credentials? And he's like, well, I went to Juilliard. I went to Harvard yeah. Business School. I travel <laughs> extensively. And, like, this is the whole thing. And it keeps getting funnier every time I see it. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, the exorcist. I've seen it 160. His whole delivery in that is just amazing. But the key to it is, is that we don't know much about him. And like, no. he's just this malevolent force, this humongous yep. like menace that is just bearing down on everyone. And I, I, I'm going to bring it up. But maybe this is the last time. If the sequel gets into his origin story, oh, I'm out. Yes. I am yeah. out no, big time. There was one, some draft, I don't know which one, had that origin no. story kind of mentioned uh-uh. of how he like, he, I think it was like he asked someone to, to to get married and then they said no, so he hung himself, but it was slow and he died for a long time. And it's just not that it's for this, no. it's not interesting. No, he's not a malevolent horny ghost that's also like a schemer and a and that's a fun, like a prankster. Yes. Yeah, yes. that is fun. You don't want to be bogged down in that backstory. Well, no. look, just as this ballad of songbirds and snakes yeah. movie or whatever decides to presuppose what if yeah. the nefarious present Coriolanus Snow yes. wasn't always evil. Beetlejuice 2 could also put out there, what if Beetlejuice himself mm-hmm. wasn't always a randy pervert? Uh-huh. And the adventure along the way mm. is to find oh. out how he became a randy pervert. You see? <laughs> I, that is, it's true. Beetle, Beetlejuice is just like Cornhole Snow. Uh, <laughs> oh my god that's the problem like you're saying with the, the hunger games rehabilitating president snow yep. this new wonka movie rehabilitating the dastard willy wonka who's murderous <laughs> chocolatier absolutely he's he's killing all those Keeps I don't them like villains it. It's yes it's good um but i th- i mean there's so much here we can't go through it all i mean it's just this is a if ever you needed to showcase for the brilliance of Michael Keaton, you just need to yes. show various clips of this performance because it's so many different modes. It's the physicality. It's the voices. I mean, Chris, you already mentioned it, but when he drops 
Yeah. The blah, 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 this is how I'm talking like Beetlejuice to do the whole uh, study to Juilliard. Like, uh, he goes into those vocal modes. Like, this is a capital P performance it right is. here. It is. Nice and, fucking model. Yeah. Well, I, and, uh, 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 this is when I think Alec Baldwin is at his best. I love because, like, uh, he is, he does, like, the, ner- the ner- nerdiest thing, which is, we are leaving, which yes. is just like this, like, <laughs> classic nerd guy getting getting too much uh, rest at the car wash. And it's just like, you know what, sir? We're leaving. You know what I mean? Yep. We're leaving yep. now. Uh, I do it's love the guy he- who leaves the comedy club after he starts getting ribbed during some crowd work. You know, it's like, oh, you're getting up. All right, fine. We, we shop at the same store where he starts wearing his outfit. He's like, oh, we're Hermanos, right? <laughs> Saturn. You've been to Saturn. I've been to Saturn. Sandworms. You hate them, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I, 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 you know, like in any other fucking movie, they would be going. You would get fucking five minutes on trying to figure out how to undo the Beetlejuice thing. Just saying, home, home, home. Like, yes, yeah. I don't need to hear why that works. It just yes. fucking yep. works. Like, who yep. cares? It makes it like it works for the movie because it makes sense. Yes, everyone can instantly understand it. Yep, and the movie does not yep. hit the brake pedal at all. Well, but. Well, Ooh, but what if we listen to some asshole on the internet about this? <laughs> what if we listen to him and made a 15 minute scene about what it means to go home, home, home? <laughs> I want to meet I, I got to see this guy's work, the guy you're describing. <laughs> first, it almost sounds like us, but I know you're describing like a one of those YouTube bottom feeders, right? Uh, uh, Reddit, YouTube, you take your pick. Yeah, okay. sure, sure. <laughs> I won't, but yes. <laughs> Um, you know, s- some stuff to catalog under why this might not be for the youngest of children. Of course, nice fucking model honk honk on his <laughs> dick. Also, the they ask him like, "Can you be scary?" and he does the "Can I be scary?" and he turns around and oh, does yeah. the jerk off motion. <laughs> yes. uh, I watched this movie a couple of weeks ago on TNT because uh, it just was on before I left for the house. They have to like the way they stretch that scene to cut out <laughs> his jerk off motion oh, is no. really like it's like pan and scan for it's advanced panning <laughs> and ridiculous. scanning because they just don't want the the, the hand well, you're cut out motion. everything for adults from this movie when you aired on tv are you you removing dick cavett next <laughs> <laughs> to, to sli- yeah, he's certainly not for children <laughs> to slightly uh defend the was tnt corporate the, i that when i saw that I never left my brain. I was using that all the time. Just all the yeah, minute yeah. I figured that out, but I was that's like, a good oh, thing, Chris. This is, yeah, it's I mean, better it is, they it learn is. it from Michael Keaton, a, an true. esteemed performer, versus the TikTok jerk off boys, which it, I'm sure exists. And they're probably great, but like, yeah, it's true. You want a Juilliard jerk off artist? Exactly. Apparently, the nice fucking model was Michael Keaton yelling at a sex decorator that like <laughs> something something like he was in the scene. He, it's that scene and the. It, I think he kicks it, but it wasn't supposed to fall over. And that oh. the fact that he did, it did. He just goes, "Hey, oh. nice fucking model." That's and amazing. Like, Tim Burton was like, "That's gonna stay in the movie." Yeah, yeah, oh, because that's is that it's when the tree falls over. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Right. So oh, he, that's like, he's great. Like, yeah, yeah, fucking bunch of losers. And he kicks it, and then it, and it, hey, nice fucking model. Uh, that's amazing. Rated no. PG, by the way. Amazing, sure. fucking yep. amazing. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, but I, I, when I saw this, like, I think must have been like the super early 90s, like for a kid who wasn't growing up religious at all, like I, I, this was an ideal look at what re- yeah. like a religion would be like an idea of the afterlife. I kind of like was like, it's not great, but it certainly is more interesting than fucking <laughs> I'm either going to be burning forever right. or hanging out with a bunch of fucking cloud boys. It's this and defending your life. <laughs> Yeah, yes, that's, yeah, that's all I need. And both of them focus on the bureaucracy of it all. It's like being at the DMV. It's very funny. Yep, both yep. of them. And may I say, Cloud Boys, stand back and stand by. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so they realize that they're, they're not going to. This is Alec Baldwin's, you know, I have an idea. I'm going to, we're going to haunt them one more time. This is the dinner party scene. Yes, Dick Cavett is here. Um, oh, yeah. Playing Lydia's art dealer. Uh, I can't see Dick Cavett without the Simpsons joke of like, you're going to see, you'll be seeing Groucho tonight if you don't leave me alone. <laughs> you'll be having dinner with Groucho tonight if yeah. you don't leave me alone, which is which it's, is oh my God. It's, <laughs> it's a weird thing because like, I, man, I love the guy. Dick Cavett is such a fascinating dude. If you ever oh, yeah. watch the, on the criterion of husbands, the Cassavetes movie, there is an episode of the Dick Cavett show where those three maniacs, Falk, Cassavetes, and Gazzara 
went on the show to to promote the movie was the goal of the appearance. <laughs> and they are so wasted. And they're just like chain smoking and just like straight up fucking with Dick Cavett. And he looks so uncomfortable. It's like the worst show yeah. he ever did. Like he said this before or whatever. He looks more comfortable dealing with those guys than he looks being in this movie, Beetlejuice. <laughs> There's just something. I mean, I think he's funny in it, but he yeah. definitely looks only kind of just happy to be I, here. I with mean, it. his character is sort of annoyed. He's like the art uh, agent for uh, Delia and the art sucks. Like he yes. looks at the the art and you get that re- reaction shot. It's great. He, he's just, he's so warm. He's like, I've been carrying you for years. I love the, uh, so like they're, they're having this little thing. And I think, yeah, Otho and this other woman who I think is a writer for somebody, for for something is uh, are going at it. This is the you know dropped a uh, house on her sister. Lol. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, and then, it's uh, the care. I don't know that the character is ever mentioned by name, but she's credited as Beryl. This is Adele Lutz, who indeed was married to David Byrne from like 1987 to 2004. Oh, really? Sounds about right. There. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Lydia pipes up with, "Oh, you know, I've seen some ghosts in this house," and uh, that's this is when Car- my. One of my favorite Catherine Hara lines is when she, she just cuts her like, oh, no, no, Lydia, just stop it already with that. You've already ruined my sheets. But that's what it is. Kids, you know I love them. Yeah. Which is just like <laughs> the way she screams, kids, you know I love them. With, with that nervous laughter thing yes, that she uh, does. Oh, man. I uh, mean, this this to me, I mean, I don't know if it's one of the best movie sequences of all time. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite movie sequences of yes. all time. Because yeah. it's, again, it's, it's just so ridiculous. You know, here comes Deo. And we're just lip syncing Deo. I love Glenn Shadix taking the, oh, yeah. the bucket for the the ice and just using it as a drum. Yes, and the, and the little reaction this- shots of like him just like not like because he's being forced to do it, but right, then being right. possessed to do it anyway and getting yes. into it. It's great. Yes, dude, he does this amazing like Glenn Shadix in his in his facial acting is and his physicality is like. Something is forcing me to do this, but also I'm looking like I'm not the one doing this. Yes. Like it's so, and it's well, not. Oh my god, it sucks that he is gone because like that's what's so great about this too, right? He doesn't have to be like Dahlia. I'm not doing yeah. this. Like it's just you get his feeling from his physicality, well, and I, I mean you get that with. I mean that's why the the tight shots are uh, interestingly enough of Catherine O'Hara. Glenn Shadix and Jeffrey Jones because they're all able to do that with their eyes and and mouths and like right. she's like sc- like Jeffrey Jones is scared but he's also kind of enjoying it you know what I mean and she's yeah I, her, her when it, it just sort of starts out of nowhere is just kind of like her facial expressions are just priceless like <laughs> yeah I mean, it's and, great uh, Jeffrey Jones is that line Otho are you doing this at first <laughs> <laughs> if Otho uh, had the mystical powers uh, to do this would be great I, I mean he is essentially playing a scaled down version of Otho in Demolition Man like yeah. he's essentially doing like when he uh, becomes uh, Simon Phoenix's like manager right associate right. Bob right yeah yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I just I love I mean like just the unexpectedness of this sequence. Like you could never see this coming. You no, know what I mean? I mean like, shrimp hands. You never yes. see shrimp hands coming. And now uh, shrimp hands <laughs> are terrifying. Ever by the way. since I was a young boy, I wanted to eat a hand that looks like a <laughs> shrimp. Think about how good that like, cause the problem yeah. with shrimp is there's never enough. Yeah. Shrimp, if you've got a whole human esque <laughs> hand, that is shrimp. Right. I see, right. I see what yeah. you're saying here. I would love, you it. know what? These shrimp hands remind me. It's kind of the same level of scare you get in that first Ghostbusters when the hands come out of Dana's chair yeah, and yeah. hold on to her before yeah. she gets sucked into the fridge or whatever. It pushes it like um, one step further that it's like, okay, this is almost scary now. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. But then you look at it and you're like, no, this thing has like shrimp cocktail fingers. That's also at, still, you well, know, Well, here's the question. They're all Eric. giggling at the end, like all the fucking, right. yes. when they come down. Eric, your, my question to you is, Shrimp hands? Do they have bones in them now? Like, or oh, is, are they just pure shrimp? That's a good question. Because that's a, that's the question. Or is it, it? Or is it that it's a? Is it like a? It was deshelled in some way. Is it like a <laughs> yes. crab or, so, or lobster oh. of some kind? You know? is it all, well, oh a, man! If it's a hand that is just shrimp meat, count me in. Yes. Yeah. But if I'm eating around bones, I don't well, know. Well, the thing is, like, it depends on the bones. If it's like like a like a regular fish where you get all those little needle bones, no, yeah. thank you. Sure, but right. if you got like a I don't frog know, like, bones, like kind a of a human thing. hands bones, I can eat around no problem. 
<laughs> okay. It, it might actually be good. You might actually right. enjoy that, I think. But yeah. those, those little, you're talking about them little fish bones that like you could easily chomp through. Yes. Them and and I would like, oh, die great, I just, and it would be terrible. But if it can, sure. if it's, if it's, if it's human bones, I think I could, I can get through that. I could get, I could get past that. Those won't kill you. Uh, yeah. the, but the fish ones, I will, would prefer sure. though, like totally gelatinous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. yeah. Pure meat. On, pure meat would be, pure meat yeah. would be pure just ideal. Meat. Listen though, th- these these shrimp arms that we're we're gonna chow down on, they have to be uh, peeled and cleaned already because I'll tell oh, you yeah. one of the most obnoxious <laughs> things ever. Get the ever. shit down your arm. <laughs> yes, dude. Because you got to get the shit veins out. You got to get the the shell off. It is a pain in the ass to to peel and clean a shrimp. It is I really. It's one of my least favorite culinary tasks if I'm making something. It's annoying and time consuming. And if it's a it's a human arm version of that. I need someone else to do it before uh, before I'm challenged. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you, go, right. go, you got under the uh, shrimp monger then. I think the I think the flesh looks good, firm, and tasty in this one. I don't <laughs> think you would have to do too much work. I do like the fact that this all happens, and like I, the thing is, is like I maybe as a kid I thought it was scary, but like, but like he actually does. Uh, Burton does the smart thing, of course. So he's just like. They're not scared by it. They think it's entertaining. Yes. They yeah, think right. it's funny yes. and fun. Like uh, they, they've never done anything like this before. It's it's like a total new experience for rich people who uh, have all the experience. It, it was like to. being right. in an amusement park. Yes, yes, exactly. You're a flake, Delia. If you want to scare people, do it with your sculpture. That's <laughs> Dick Cavett's last line of the movie. And she Ulth, does. Ultha's like, this is it, Charles. You can get Maxie Dean up here now. His wife loves the supernatural. Ooh. She does. Uh, and it's, it's it's great, yeah, because it's like, I love Alex Baldwin. Like, any second now, they're coming out screaming. Any right. second. Any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that man thinks this is a bad performance of his. I no, think it, it's one of his best. I agree. It, it's uh, because he's, uh, he, I'm telling you, it's still that alpha shit. Like, yeah, I, I, it's, sure. he doesn't like that he's like kind of a dweeb. Well, then why take the role in the first place? I Thanks, mean, this is, early, this is early on for him. So yeah. He needed, he needed it. Uh, yeah, I something. guess that's true. Um, so they, you know, they run up and they invade the attic at this point. This is where Otho gets his hands on the book here. Yes. We get the line, you know, he was once the world's leading paranormal, uh, or no, 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 no. The line that I'm reading here is Jeffrey Jones wants to turn the house into the world's national, the leading national paranormal research center, yes. which is amazing. And they're making all these grand plans. And then, uh oh, here's Beetlejuice snake turning from the the railing the the staircase yes. banister or whatever and it is unsettling this yeah, fucking head is. of his and the whole thing it's scary otho gets smacked in the ass <laughs> dude Jeff, otho takes yeah. a tumble down these stairs which is pretty wild pretty rough foreshadowing of what wound up happening to poor glenn shadix yeah it's, uh, it's unfortunate. at the end of his life which is very weird um but this is the great beetlejuice set uh, we're coming for your daughter chuck Yes, <laughs> he says to Jeffrey Jones before he drops him from the second floor down onto the first floor, which is pretty great. And um, Lydia thinks this is the Maitlands. Um, right. right. Yeah. Why yeah. are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. Gina this Davis is, uh, says Beetlejuice, 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 and he's gone. And then that's. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you know, and what I appreciate about this, too, is like the Beetlejuice snake. It's like an animated and at sometimes puppet head thing. I feel like. What's also going to be unfortunate is whatever this new thing is, oh, if sure. Beetlejuice is turning into anything, oh, yeah. all your Ooh. model work and your stop motion stuff nope. that has such a charming and positive and unique effect for this movie is going to be out the window. It's going to be Michael Keaton's head animated onto a snake or like whatever it is. You know? Also good with the snake banister here is the shadow th- work here where the banister reconstitutes as a banister, yes. but you see it in Whoop. shadow. Yes. Right. I, I love uh so this is Beetlejuice is yelling at the Maitlands, the Maitlands yelling at Beetlejuice, like leave these people alone. Uh he's calling them a bunch of losers. This is when she picks him up, uh t- uh Gene Davis picks him up, uh tells him to leave the little girl alone, and he turns into a, a spiky Beetlejuice, which I believe is definitely an action figure somewhere. <laughs> well, indeed. I was I'm glad you brought this up, Steve, because I was thinking about when when he is saying to Alec Baldwin, like, oh, we even dress the same. Yeah. I definitely had a be I had several Beetlejuice toys. I had spiky Beetlejuice. I had this where it was like 
the head spun around and like one nice. side was Alec Baldwin in the shirt oh, and then the funny. other side was Beetlejuice oh, that's cool. the shirt I believe I had at least like three or four Beetlejuice toys I, I uh, had both from the cartoon and the movie I definitely had Spikey and I definitely had him in the tux but guys uh, yeah. guys it's not Spikey it's horny because now uh, he's sorry, horny yes. and this is but, when he's got the ho- the spikes the yes. horns on and he's yeah. right. he's hopping to the whorehouse here the whore, yeah. whore house, which I love, its appearance, uh, Dante's Inferno room, and uh, Barbara goes to Adam, Adam like, "Why did you build that?" He's like, "I didn't." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when, uh, when this is when we get uh, caseworker Juno again with I think the football team here. Yes, yes. She summons them, sit down. You two, the whore house was my idea. I want Beetlejuice <laughs> out of the picture, which yes. is great. By the way, the, um, that yeah. cartoon, you can't say enough how weird of a leap. Because sometimes you get your cartoon, your Aladdin cartoon, for example. It's like, sure, sure. well, you know what? We can't have the genie be free because then there's no genie in the cartoon. So we'll take that part of the ending out. And now they're just going on adventures with their genie friend who's still yes. a genie. Well, okay. What about that weird movie yes. where that uh, 500-year-old guy wants to marry a 16-year-old girl? Okay. Well, <laughs> what if uh, we take out all the good guys and we make them friends mm-hmm. and like, He's still hanging out with her, but it, we make it "quote unquote" not creepy. She, they turn him into Drop Dead Fred. Yes, uh, they do. Uh, yes. And he, good beca- call. And he's like helping her with like bullies and shit. I'm like, yes. no, please you want stop. To fuck her in this movie. <laughs> All he talks about is how much he wants to fuck her, marry what's, her. <laughs> yes. But what's crazy though is I believe if I'm remembering like the opening uh, like credit sequence of that cartoon. There is a moment where he's got the tux and she's got the bride dress on yes. just in the like, these are the wacky adventures of Beetlejuice <laughs> yes. and Lydia Deeds. Doop, doop. Oh, by the way, one time in 1988, they almost got married. Don't worry about it. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a metric fuck ton of that yeah. Beetlejuice you know cartoon. I think ages ago we did it on AD and I think yeah. I maybe said it there, but it was one of those like, Fox after school cartoons, it like that backed into Eek the Cat. Oh, baby, I was in front of the TV. <laughs> but to Steve's point, when I saw this as a kid and then I saw the cartoon come out, yeah, I was like, this is not Beetlejuice. No. He's yeah, exactly. Not yeah. trying to sure. do, you know, not <laughs> oh, just I mean, that, but it just felt like a different product. So he's I, not yeah. trying to poker. I, oh, yeah. I, I, as a kid, I noped <laughs> out of Beetlejuice the cartoon because it was too dissimilar to the movie. You should have. <laughs> A cartoon of uh, Fre- uh, it's the Nightmare on Elm Street cartoon, but it's uh, Nancy and <laughs> Freddie getting into all sorts of adventures. Oh, you have a big test this week, huh? Maybe I'll give you a your, your teacher a nightmare. <laughs> oh, you can't find anything on TV. Well, I'll turn into to the TV, and we can yep. find something to for us. Welcome to prime time, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, exactly. Oh, uh, you're getting bullied at school? Oh, I'm going to kill them. Oh, that episode <laughs> was cut from circulation. Just a, 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 a touching mother and son called Friday the 13th. Just an <laughs> like oh, animated yes. show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is all the stuff with Juno and the football team. And coach, where's the men's room? <laughs> I'm not your coach. He survived. <laughs> men's room? Are you kidding me? <laughs> She teaches uh, them to awesome. like knock out their eyeballs and make themselves look grosser to go and fucking, right. you know, one cl- last scare. Yeah. yeah. Go clean your house and don't forget the photographs and that damned handbook. Right. That's the, this is the part where she like sort of sets that up and it's like, yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get to that. Maybe and we'll this, uh, Barbara has that. It's a, it's a good moment of they're dressed in this horrific thing. You know, Gina Davis has like a big alligator head with her eyeballs in it. It's so um, awesome. Uh, Alec Baldwin has a weird nose thing. Also, no eyeballs. Eyeballs on his he hand. He looks like he looks like spy versus spy. Yes, and he she does. She looks like just the sandworm. Yeah, she yeah, looks she like does. the head of a sandworm, which is kind of interesting. And she, and you know, she's like, you know, I don't want to scare these people anymore. I don't. I just, I want, I, I don't want Lydia to have to go through anything else. And now we realize that they are much more uh, paternal and maternal towards Lydia, uh, right. which is going to be important for the end of the movie. Yes. But this is the big deal because Maxie Dean's coming up tonight, baby. Vera said that. <laughs> uh, the great Robert Goulet. And the whole thing is Charles has to impress him with a ghost demonstration so he will help finance the purchasing of all of uh, Winter River here, which is just, well, I kind of feel 
it would be cool if the cartoon was like, oh, he Charles actually did that and yes. created this kind of weird world because the parents are in the Charles cartoon. D, they're they're yeah. there, but they are sort of like backseat characters. Or yes. a little bit. You know what's weird is the school, which you see at the end of this movie. Yes. Is quite the location for the mm-hmm. cartoon. Well, yeah. I mean, he's got Ed Cornwell ready to do the insect museum. Don't you know? <laughs> he's ready to go. He's we, ready we to do it. We don't care because we're just here to see some ghosts. <laughs> you pots. You think Goulet was like two Manhattans in by the time uh, he shot his first oh, scene here? Definitely. Uh, um, that's why we I love, love him. Well, they're like, they're getting ready. It's like the morning of, and they're like amping themselves up. Like, you know, all right, Delia, like tonight's the big night or whatever. Here comes Glenn Shadix. Clearly he has crashed from the dinner oh, yeah. party the night before. And this like silk, like Asian influence bathrobe that this dude's wearing. And Not he's bad. Like, barefoot out on their deck. Like <laughs> if you're Charles Dietz, you're just like, and here's my wife's friend hanging what? out for the fourth night in a row. Well, probably last night, I imagine Otho for at least the maybe the fifth time saw asked if he could join them in the bedroom. Oh, <laughs> oh really? yeah, definitely. Yes, just, oh, hey, you know. Chuck, you want a third? <laughs> Look, Delia, I've been so close to you over these years. Yeah. Can I just sit in the corner and then maybe join in a little? <laughs> uh, this is where Lydia, you know, as we're leading up to this dinner party, she encounters Beetlejuice in the model, and she's like writing the suicide note around here. I am so alone. <laughs> I am so utterly alone. Also, we kept the suicide attempt, I think, doesn't get mentioned in the cartoon either. No. I think. I think, right? They I don't think su- so. That she's suicidal. I don't think that's in there. No. Okay. Wow. All right. that's she's a- just kind of wacky. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got a nice little like red dress thing that she's wearing yeah. everywhere. What's wild, though, is that she says that she is going to kill herself by jumping off of the Winter yes. River Bridge where the Maitlands ate shit. Yeah. She's smart. Apparently, she's like, all right, do you look like that when you're drowned? And I guess I'm okay. So drowning <laughs> is the way then. Okay, God. <laughs> yes, she settled on a look. Just commit to it. Jump <laughs> off that bridge. And you exactly. got it for the next exactly. 100, 130 years or whatever. She Your ghost will it. dry off and mm-hmm. you won't, you know, you won't have any like physical abnormalities and whatnot. Yeah, totally. You're just regular. She jumps off the bridge and just holds, but thinks again at this last minute, holds on to the edge. And then the dog comes back and starts pissing on her fingers. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Chris Cabin, if I'm hanging from my life by a bridge and a dog comes along and starts tinkling on my fingies, uh-huh. I'm holding on. I'll, yeah. oh, no, I'll oh, get no. pissed on. Hot piss. It's too slippery. This hot piss is <laughs> <Yes>. too slippery. <laughs> oh, this p- this hot piss is burning my face. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's too, that piss is too hot. Oh! <laughs> now, how hot is this dog's piss is my question. Come on, Patches. Yeah. Dog piss can get pretty hot. The dog from uh, <laughs> Sorry. Man, Man's Best Friend, dude. It's like, yeah. it's like acid it's piss. Acid. It's acid. And, like, and uh, Eric's got like, all right, yeah, dog piss can get pretty hot. Let me tell you. <laughs> the hotter end of the hotter end of dog piss. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, it just it's alien blood. It just goes right through. <laughs> yes, yes, it's xenomorph <laughs> blood for sure. There's a great detail when like so Beetlejuice is trying to like coax it, uh, coax Lydia into freeing him from the model, and she's like, "Well, why can't you just tell me your name?" And he's got this great bit about like. Yeah. Well, then you're going to be giving it to all your friends and then the word's going to get around. I'm going to, have to appear at store openings and stuff. <laughs> I love this idea of like, yes. you're like cutting the ribbon on a convenience store and it's like doing the ceremony and everybody knows uh, Winter River's favorite son, Beetlejuice. And those jokes set up how little they really care about these rules, you know? Yeah. Oh, of course. It's just yeah, for totally. fun. Uh, and I also love, so like we're doing charades. And he's like, turn around, turn around. And it's just an enormous beetle sitting in a chair. He's like, hey, how are you? Which is oh, just- dude, that's so great. <laughs> and beetle. it's got the beetle juice yeah. voice, the voice, which is awesome. Yeah. And then the orange juice pouring out beetle breakfast, beetle drink, <laughs> beetle juice. Oh, yeah. The Maitlands stop her before she could say it the third time. Right, exactly. Um, and you know, Barbara says somewhere around here, like, you know, oh, by the way, also, like, I want to be with Lydia. Like, I don't yes. want to... Mm-hmm. Kick them out of the house right, or right. whatever. We get this. We get this Charles Dietz real estate presentation for Goulet here, and it's really funny. Just all the different, yeah. The insect museum is going to yes. be up and running. The this, that, and the other thing. You know, the ghosts uh, are still hiding out upstairs. Otho says, like, don't worry, Robert Goulet. Like, you're going to see ghosts tonight or whatever. 
Um, Lydia, this is kind of a great line where it's like, oh, Otho is going to lead the seance to like bring, you know, bring the ghost down to us or whatever. And she goes, uh, what, uh, somebody says something about like, you don't have anything to worry about. I think it's Otho says this to, to the room. And Lydia goes, what am I worried about, Otho? You can't even change a tire. And Robert <laughs> Goulet starts laughing at him, which is really great. This yes. seance scene here is where we're at. It's pretty um, terrifying. It's, it's, it's it on is, the darker yeah. part. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. scarier for sure. Yeah. And as it's happening, their wedding dress and wedding suit are being filled with their bodies, but they're also sort of like becoming decrepit because they're going to become exercised ghosts, I guess. Yes, and I think that's that, the idea. The lost yeah. room and... This is when Lydia realizes the only way to help is to get Beetlejuice. Uh, and then this is the great. Um, <laughs> he says the whole thing about like, well, you know, again, it's another one of those like vague, like them's the rules. But it's like, yes. if I'm going to get out of here. I uh, yeah, I got to get married. Yeah, that's right. So if you marry me, I'll help out here. And then. We're even babe. It's yes. the first time he says babe right here. Oh God, it's so good. Uh, but yeah, bu- 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 Beetlejuice. It's showtime. Yeah. Which again, here's what's great, right? Is like you get this in this movie one time. One time does yes. Beetlejuice say it's showtime. Uh-huh. That cartoon, every episode, Beetlejuice is saying <laughs> it's showtime. It's showtime, man. And it's kind of diminishing returns, which with every cartoon episode, you yes. see. Well, also, I mean, uh, he. I think he says he says ghost with the most once. I think that was on t shirt like that. Yeah. Oh, was absolutely. Everywhere. Oh, it's a great catchphrase. Yeah. It was a it's- sensation. The ghost <laughs> with the most. Um, this carnival Beetlejuice is, mm-hmm. I think, the most terrifying iteration of Beetlejuice. Mm-hmm. He's got like a weird, like merry-go-round mm-hmm. kind of uh, baby's bassinet kind of thing on his head. The fucking arms that just stretch out yeah. to become the big mallets. It's all, I mean, you could really do something with a cross between like Beetlejuice and Freddy Krueger. Cause there is a lot of the same They're- sort of like shape changing terror kind of stuff. There's the a bugs. guy on the YouTube. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube with a fan film for you. I'm sure. Uh, really? <laughs> Check that out. Is Walter Koenig in it? Oh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yes. that time Beetlejuice beamed up to the Enterprise. Yes. Of course. No, he's playing Beetlejuice. I have the gust with the must. <laughs> <laughs> nice see, packing now, model. <laughs> now, Walter, we really want you uh, to play Beetlejuice in this Beetlejuice fan film. However. For whatever reason, you, Walter Koenig, Canadian actor, have to do your Chekhov Russian voice as Beetlejuice. Mm-hmm. It's the only no. way people are going to recognize you, buddy. Sorry. No problem. I have the ghost with the most, the tiniest ghost with the tiniest most. I, I, Let's I, I, get married, babe. He just automatically fits in the model. He doesn't have to shrink down. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but we are going to be crediting you as Chekhov. We're not, oh, we're not, it's not going to be no. Walter Koenig. It's just going to be Chekhov. That's it's how we know that you're you. Beetle off, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, but speaking of what... Beetle off, this is the test room. I'd step right up. He smacks Maxie Dean uh, and his wife up into the upper st- up upstairs he, floor. He has to kill them here, right? They're dead. Feels they're like they're dead. Yeah, I they're think dead. they're dead. The thing that's crazy is like Otho kind of. It's funny, and it is such a great way to yes. like punk Otho. Like Beetlejuice strips his his cool like black outfit off, and yes. he's wearing like a really gauche like Dumb and Dumber light blue tuxedo kind of thing. And like he's to Otho, that is the most horrifying visage. And like he runs out of the house, never to be seen again. Yeah, you kind of feel like Otho should be going through a wall or something. He's yeah. way more. Uh, you know, evil than Maxi and Sarah Dean, of course. But it's a punchline because I mean, this movie is a wackadoo comedy. You know what That's I mean? That's true. Like, and this is the only time, actually, that Glenn Shadix's weight is referenced in yes. a joke is when Beetlejuice grabs him and goes, "Not so fast, round boy." Yes, <laughs> which is preferable to Fat Boy, I have to say. It sure. Is. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of that, and then this. My favorite edit in the movie is like when they're all. Uh, disposed of or whatever and it's just the Dietzes and the Maitland ghosts left in the house we have this like really harsh cut where it's like Beetlejuice has just scared Otho out of the house and then it's like smash cut Keaton's in the tuxedo and like everything has changed just due to the edit like we didn't see anything and it wasn't like 
here we go. And like, yeah. or he doesn't say showtime a second time. Right. It's just like, here's an edit. And now he's clearly in like a wedding tuxedo. And this mm-hmm. thing is like moving forward. I love that. Shall it's, we? It's this red 1970s like tuxedo. Yes. And my father wore the exact same one, I believe. At, at his <laughs> and yes. great. And his hair is like slick to the side yeah, yeah. now. He kind of brushes it at one point and it's disgusting. Like him, <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice just running a brush over his hair. And I'm like, yeah. oh God, why bother? That poor brush. <laughs> the, oh God. The fucking finger, like the, the yeah. She meant nothing to me. She meant oh, nothing yes. to me whatsoever. He's pulling the oh, ring off the uh, finger. The finger with the ring on it. Oh, yeah, that's great. And, and it's that shit is great too, right? The hokey, like, oh geez, Beetlejuice lost the ring. Oh God. You know, he's a and, divorcee. This is oh, when right. we meet my favorite character, of course, the priest who comes out of the fireplace, who is a, a clearly like a Nightmare Before Christmas looking dude. Yes, like he almost looks guy. like an alien or something. Yes. Yeah. This and is, um, do you beat her juice? <laughs> Doing the body of the preacher is uh, Tony Cox from like Bad Santa and oh, nice. a thousand other things. And the voice is this guy, Jack Angel, just passed away in 2021. Well, heaven has got itself another angel. (laughs) Seriously uh, successful voice actor, almost entirely down the board. One one of those, like, you know, additional voices on a shit ton of things. I guess also, I didn't see any of them, but those... um, at least some of those new Smurf things. He's oh. Papa Smurf. Oh, okay. So like th- this huh. guy was like still doing it well into oh. w- into old some age. of those new Smurf things. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> As Eric said, though, I'm sure he'll make a great Cloud Boy. He'll be oh, a beautiful yes. Cloud Boy up there. <laughs> oh shit! He voiced uh, Teddy in AI Artificial Intelligence. Well, oh. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, but I guess yes. he's in hell then. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, fine. It's fine. Uh, Beetlejuice speaks for Lydia here. Uh, I love all I the, vo- the voice is, throwing yeah. shit is cool. I'm Lydia Dietz and I'm of sound mind. The next, <laughs> the man next to me is the one I want. I do love that man of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the, uh, like him. It's like just the added gag of like, you know, Beetlejuice is the one that, ha- that has like instigated all of this and whatever. And then like when the moment comes, he's like, he gets, he actually gets cold feet. And he's like, oh, I always said that if I ever did it, I was only going to do it once. Oh, yeah. He's like, like psyching yeah. himself into uh, it. Oh, fuck. Michael Keaton's a genius. That's so good. Nothing will make me laugh more than the cat scream he does to yes. Gina Davis when she, when she says Beetlejuice. Yes, because they're all trying to say Beetlejuice. Like he he zip, zippers her and then her, her lips and then throws a metal plate over plate it. Plate over yes. it. Yeah. And then he puts Alec Baldwin in his own model. Yes, uh, after knocking his teeth out that are chattering on the floor. Yes. Beetlejuice like tap dancing around the feet that are like yeah. chittering to attack him it's, is pretty great. It's great. Yes. Um also reminded me one of the things I wanted to mention about his physicality when he's sort of like dancing towards the brothel there a while back. It almost looks exactly like some of the dancing Jack Nicholson does as the Joker, like yeah. a year later. Mm-hmm. Sure, totally. And I'm like, is there some sort of like Tim Burton like dancing guidebook where he's like, all right, now this is the way I want you to dance when you approach the whorehouse. And then like a year later, it's like, Jack, this is how I want you to dance when you're destroying the art gallery. <laughs> I will tell you, the man does have some fancy feet because yeah. if if has anybody seen Tim Burton is dating Monica Bellucci now. <laughs> right. Really? He, he, you know what? I'll t- I will say this. At least it's age appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I think it's great. I think he's fantastic. But I'm telling you, he's either like the coolest guy to hang out with or has like a Godzilla tail down there. Because like <laughs> the man, this this guy hitting it, like there's this video of him at the red carpet uh, with Monica Bellucci. And you could just tell he is like, on cloud nine about the fact that he's dating Monica Bellucci. He's like dancing, well, like literally. Of course. He's like skipping around a red carpet because he's what, dating what Monica was this, Bellucci. Uh, what was this red carpet for? Do very, very recent. I don't know. I just saw a video on uh, Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry. X. Uh, I saw yes. a, a little video. Get it right, pedophile. I'm sorry, Elon. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really funny if you get a chance. Oh, weird. Um, I mean, you know. Good for them. Um, oh yeah, I, I hope they're happy. I, you think I, I she's gonna do. turn out one of his motion pictures? She's already she's in Beetlejuice too already. By the way. Oh, oh really? Oh. No, yeah. oh. is that true? Oh. She's Plans where we met on Beetlejuice too. Credited as Beetlejuice's wife. 
Uh, oh. Okay. All right. See, here's the all thing. All right. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Eric's right. It's already terrible. Yeah, that's yeah, not I, good. IMDb has Jenna Ortega as Lydia's daughter. Sure. Monica Bellucci as Beetlejuice's wife. Willem Dafoe is fucking around. Hey. Yeah. Oh, well, all right. All right. Now my attention's coming back. You can call the me. You can call me Cockroach Sandwich. <laughs> Hi. I'm Beetlejuice's uncle, Cockroach Sandwich. Oh, my God. What was that David Lynch movie he was in? Uh, Wild at Heart. He's oh, like, yes. that's Those like teeth. a Beetlejuice character. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's a that's a fucked up character. Um, yeah, so Barbara dr- drives a sandworm yes. through the the house, and it just eats Beetlejuice again. I do appreciate the you know economics of all this. It's a yes. bonkers world. We are under no obligation to explain ourselves. So like. No, I don't see her wrangling this sandworm no. like fucking uh, dune or something. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, it just happens. Yeah. She's just on it. It just jumps through this house. Beetlejuice is eaten. Yeah. Bob's your uncle. That's the end of it's the movie. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's fun. And it doesn't matter. The, it, yep. the way this movie moves and how it's set up. Yes. You don't, you're not beholden to any of that stuff. And it's a great, it's a, it's a strength. Other movies, it might be a weakness, but it's a strength here. You're, 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 so you're, you don't want 15 minutes of her doing saddling lessons to get the fucking <laughs> sandworm going to Saturn for no, 15 no, more seconds. No, no, I'm, not, I'm not on Reddit. What if Beetlejuice had a wife, Eric? Does that do anything for you? Oh, boy. That, uh, no, it doesn't do anything. Do you oh, okay. guys think like there's gonna be a shot in Beetlejuice 2 where Monica Bellucci just goes, ha, I'll save that one for later and spits a loogie into the breast pocket of her jacket. Yes. And then I like mean, grabs her crotch. Yeah, they're gonna play the hits for sure. I mean, uh, speaking of Willem Dafoe, like uh, Beetlejuice's actual wife should look more like a character from the Florida Project. Like <laughs> one of the adult characters <laughs> oh, is more God. the fucking uh, tone you want, I think. Just the purest, most gold-hearted white trash you can or, find. What's that? The the that bar document? Bloody hands, empty pockets. Bloody nose, empty pockets. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the women from that movie. Just like yep. it, that is what a Beetlejuice uh, <laughs> wife would look like. I'm one of those one one of those bar hags would marry Beetlejuice one <laughs> drunken night in Vegas. Absolutely, but sure, Mada Kabuchi, sure. That's <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> The scene we don't see is Barbara and Adam and Delia and Charles sitting down and them handing custody over to their living daughter to these ghosts. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, like whatever that deal is, it's just like, well, yep. we don't really care for it's, her. She just, seems to like you. They, they're they still at the house. They're all living under the same roof now. Interestingly enough, it looks like that, uh, right, they moved the model downstairs and, yeah. and uh, the... God, the Dietzes are li- not the Dietzes, the Maitlands. Yeah, they're they're living open in the house again, which is great. Yeah, yeah they're it's, it's all part of the house. Whatever this deal is, we've 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 made. Well, because it also looks like they've undone some of the remodeling. Because yes. like you're back in the living room, and like the lame wallpapers back up, right. and you know all of her fancy design stuff, all of Otho's hard work, we should say, yeah. uh, is 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 completely undone. Poor here. Otho. But yeah, there just needs to be some sort of like, I'm signing my daughter over to ghosts. Like Jeffrey Jones just <laughs> signing. A, a, and hey, maybe it's the little reverend guy. Maybe he's more of like, a, um, um, you know, just sort of like a a notary kind of a guy, like an afterlife yes. notary. So he comes back. And says, all right. Now we're all gathered around the transfer of girl ownership <laughs> from her human parents to ghosts. And if Lydia does get an A, <laughs> they can do Harry Belafonte debt. Yeah. You, you hear that, Mom? I might have kids one day. When I'm dead, I might be able to adopt one. Now you, <laughs> you will have to take the copy of this form back to Limbo in three weeks. We will make a reservation over the phone for you, for you to come down. But then we'll be all settled. <laughs> uh, I do appreciate that you get this quick shot of uh, Lydia leaving school, Miss Shannon's school for girls, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nice that, like, yes, she's sort of technically been adopted by ghosts and whatever, and she still mm-hmm. pretty much dresses like she's going to a funeral every fucking day. But Lydia has, like, friends at the school, and oh, she's yes. she's seen, like, happily saying goodbye to some girl as she like rides her bike happily away. I like that there's 
you can see that there's a little bit of progress with this character and it's not just like the same mopey shit right. and yeah. I'm only happy when I go home to my ghosts because like <laughs> that makes you a fucking loser Lydia sorry well yeah, well, yeah cause <laughs> death is she doesn't she no longer sees death as like change like yeah. an escape right. from what her life is she sees it as she's normalized she's been like yeah. she's come she's made peace with death in a way and like that makes yeah. her like have fun more often and like she's still gothy thank god but like <laughs> it, it, it's not like taking over her entire life. Right. And she's actually here, here in like the school uniform and the skirt and whatever yeah. is pretty much the standard character design for her in the cartoon. Sure. Yeah. Cause again, so much of it was like her at the, at the Miss yeah. Shannon school for girls or whatever. Um, I love Jeffrey Jones reading the book. That's like how to coexist with the dead, a guide yeah. for a living, the living or whatever it is. And just the fact that they're fine with it. Like the, the Dietzes are like, yeah, it's fine. Like, uh, Delia has made a sculpture of the snake beetle juice head, which was probably just like the actual stop motion model oh, from sure, the yeah, pop yeah. department, uh, which is pretty cool. I was like, oh, cool. Look, uh, Delia Dietz is uh, holding some movie memorabilia right here. Look at this. And Beetlejuice is now in the waiting room because I guess he's dead again, sort of, and <laughs> needs a caseworker. He's sitting next to a guy with a shrunken head. And a witch doctor. The witch doc. He's got ticket number two million eight hundred fifty nine. Witch doctor <laughs> has four. And <laughs> hey, that's Elvis. Oh wow. Hey, King. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great. What a great moment of that physical. That that huge laundry list number being dropped on that guy's lap. Yeah, he doesn't even do. Yeah, he just dropped. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> and I love again Beetlejuice like. Just random shit, like how he's he's telling the shrunken head guy, he's like, oh, yeah, I hope they call me soon. I got to get out of here. I got a photo shoot for GQ in about an hour. And, uh, they've been after me for months. I don't know, <laughs> some kind of a thing. It's just like, God damn it, that's funny. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the, you know, the whole thing is like she goes back. It's like, oh, well, I got to see on my science test because I refuse to dissect the animal, you know, but how'd you do a, How'd you do on that fucking math test, you <laughs> little pig? You better pass that math test, Picky. <laughs> can you spell fantastic? You better. <laughs> and she got an A on it. So it's like, can we do the thing? Okay, you can do the yeah. thing. We'll let you float. And what's cool, too, is like, this also shows you like, okay, like Alec Baldwin can make like this fake spotlight come out of nowhere. The chair starts going. They can hear the music. She can be lifted up into the air to dance. They have like mastered their ghost powers too, yeah. which is read pretty the sweet. fucking book. That's Finally awesome. sat down and read the fucking book and started <laughs> playing with your fucking Just house. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole well, thing you, re you, you read it till like halfway through the thickness of the book and then it just turns to the flip side which is the Japanese translation yeah. <laughs> oh nice you know the ending I, I, I one of my favorite endings ever maybe the music like, my god it perfect just pops image. off it's yeah. fucking awesome uh, yeah. yes I, I love and it. I, I love the the little wink at the end of the ghosts for no reason of the football team just showing up no. in the back it's yep. just a little, just it's like, it. hey, the movie's over. Goodbye, everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, you remember We're, these guys, right? The the Smash comic sensation from 20 minutes ago, the football team, they're just back for no reason. It actually kind of reminds me of, um, there's a couple times in the early goings of the uh, the Treehouse of Horrors where they will just end with random yes. like musical numbers and shit. Uh, and it's like people just kind of come out of nowhere. That's what this sort of feels like to me is like, we're kind of dancing. Here's one of the main characters from the movie. And oh, here's some just, you know, yeah. sideline tertiary ghosts or whatever. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, just uh, what a what a fucking fantastically weird movie. Uh, that's the end of it. And it should have stayed the end of it. This Beetlejuice 2. Mm. We will see. But we'll go around the horn here. Final thoughts. Uh, Eric Siska. Yeah. I mean, this movie is so much fun. So much personality. Like we were talking about, this is Burton becoming Burton. It's just. It's wonderful. It's crazy it ever got made, given the subject matter and all that. I just, I just love it to pieces. That's me. Oh, yeah. Chris Kamen. It's, I mean, it's foundational to me. I, I, if you haven't seen it, go watch it right now. Stop, you should have stopped listening to this earlier <laughs> on. This is, this is, you go watch the movie. Uh, I, I brought him up with Fincher because I think they're very similar uh, guys. I think they like have very particular views of the world that, uh, and it's funny that Burton's is much brighter than Fincher's at, when it comes down to it sure. at the end of the day. Um, but I do think they both got introduced in franchise world and went their second movie. They established exactly what I'm going to do. This is my career. This is what I will offer you. Uh, and Burton's, I, I, they both had this 90s run that was fucking insane. Like 
up until Planet of the Apes, it, it's it's hard. He ruled the fucking world. People were trying to make these movies and failing everywhere to try to yeah. make movies like this. They were it was just wasn't working out. Uh, and he's just a master at it. He knows how to do it. And uh, he still made the best superhero movie. Uh, this is my favorite movie of his for sure. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I I love this movie. Did he um, direct Quantumania? I missed that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they wish. They fucking wish. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I, I love this movie. Uh, watch it now. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll just hop on and say, like, you look at this run, you know, it's incredible. 85 <laughs> to 99, and it's just consistent bangers throughout the entirety of that. And then the you know the train starts going off the track with that apes movie and and so on i'm not going to read the whole filmography but like talk about a friggin' run man Ooh. and talk about a guy who just yeah very instrumental in the building of my love of cinema in general yeah. um yeah. and i agree with you chris i was thinking about it today watching it this is my favorite tim burton movie as much as i love those two batmans and batman returns is my favorite superhero movie this is just great. And I think it's because someone said it already. I think, Steve, maybe you said it. Like, it is so singular up until yeah. next year when they ruin that. Uh, <laughs> you know, God. do their best to ruin it. How about, like, how about just, Ed Wood 2? Yes. Yeah, see, see what Let's that guy it. was up to in the, in the afterlife, actually. By the way, there great movie. Go. I think underrated. Amazing film. I'm definitely including that like in in that flawless run of movies that he had. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, yeah, so big recommend. I, I, I'm with Chris Cabin. Turn this off right now. But before you do, listen to what Steve has to say for the closing thoughts. It's it's delightfully funny. It's a really be- and I mean I think that there is like you know uh, reading a little bit about it. One of the guys, the the main guy who wrote the f- the first draft of the script, Matthew McDonald, maybe his name is, was like really into like death and like uh, like horror stories and stuff and like. Uh, Michael Michael McDowell. Uh, but like it, it, it. What what I find interesting about that is like sort of that using that template, it turns into a Tim Burton thing. You know what I mean? Mm. Like whatever whatever that script was, and then obviously like there was another screenwriter brought on, another, another, another. Michael Keaton says a lot of his lines were improvised because this was in the Tim Burton umbrella, and it just turned into this. It, the, the 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 genes were there, you know what I mean, and it just right. turned into a Tim Burton movie, and I think that that's what's so delightful about it. It's it is such a singular, bizarre movie that I I can't believe I ever got made like selling this to somebody. And again, I think it's also because probably I don't even know. Like uh, I'll look it up right now. How much the budget of this movie was probably fifteen million dollars. You know what I mean? Fifteen million dollars. <laughs> it made seventy four, and we don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. Here's a weird little movie. This director's got some heat. Uh, you know, it's got this guy, uh, Gina Davis. She's somebody. Alec Baldwin, maybe not. Uh, Michael Keaton is due for a hit. Johnny Dangerously was fun. Like, and they just <laughs> shoved this movie out. Yeah. And it is this weird little goth miracle. I love it. It's a, it's a perfect movie, folks. If you have not seen it, go check it out. But that brings us to the end of We Love Movies Month 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this whole month, we've been launching some real bangers on some sideshows that actually normally we cover television, but we're talking movie-related things on Animation Damnation, of course. Mm. Uh, Steve, what total classic were we talking about there? Oh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? That's You want to talk about perfect movies? Like That is just a, a, mm. a, 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 a fastball from our good friend Robert Zemeckis, who doesn't have a lot of fastballs, but has a couple. <laughs> He's got a couple in, in the arsenal, absolutely. Uh, on the Nexus, we were talking about uh, the very underrated Leonard Nimoy directorial debut, Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. Mm. Uh, full-length, uh, two-hour episode, uh, me, Eric, and Chris talking about that bad boy, which was phenomenal. Eric, who did we uh, cover on the Gleep? We covered Grand Admiral Thrawn. It was a fun, Ooh. big episode. Uh, my wife joined us, and it was a lot of fun, so tune into that as well. Oh, the, big, the big blue man himself, Grand Admiral Thrawn, of course. The hit star of Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in like three uh-huh. scenes, as I understand. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll wait for Grand Admiral Thrawn too. Yes, then you'll get <laughs> then you'll get all the Thrawn you want. And of course, don't forget our sexy adventures over on Melro Two One Zero, where we finally put the nail in the coffin for that goddamn Paris subplot. There, that's over with. with oh yes, um, thank the Lord. Yes, but. Much like California in the summer, the heat is rising on both 90210 and Melrose Place. You definitely want to keep up 
with all of that. Now, Steve, here on the on the Tuesday feed, the show continues next week. Uh, we're going back to regularly scheduled We Hate Movies programming with what motion picture being discussed? <laughs> oh, we're doing a Christmassy month. Because we're going to be talking about <laughs> Die Hard 2. Of course. Oh, yeah. This is big exciting. One. Loosely set at Christmas. Oh, yeah. When we were talking about doing Die Hard 2, I was like, we didn't do that already? No. <laughs> but apparently the we one we didn't. One that we didn't do. It completes the, the cycle because we've done episodes on every single one. The first one was a commentary. We had uh, Gabrus on Die Hard with a Vengeance. Yes. So, like, this right. this finishes it out, our last Die Hard movie. Andrew, when you get the 4K out of Die Hard 2, could you just measure William Sadler's anus? Just to, yes. I want to know <laughs> yep. what the yeah, diameter check is. Check that out. Also, uh, Eric, your favorite director, Randy Harlan. Oh, wonderful. I mean, we're oh. going to complete his filmography <laughs> soon enough. Oh, yeah. So, yes, the Die Hard 2 episode next week. And you can get it advertisement free on Patreon as well. That's right. At the $8 level and up, you can get all of the Tuesday releases, uh, main feed apps, as we call them, mainly We Hate Movies episodes. But, you know, as we just had in November here, we love movies episodes as well. The Tuesday releases, you can get them bad boys ad free. Patreon.com slash We Hate Movies. But that's going to do it for We Love Movies Month 2023. We'll be back next week getting in the holiday spirit with a not so great Die Hard sequel. Until then, I've been Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy.